that I've seen myself and many other people over the past session. And so really encouraging chairs to develop city committee members' own goals and ideas and get them actively engaged in different projects that they have. But moving on now to my second platform pillar, which is engagement. And so I think engagement is something that's very important, often very hard to quantify, um, specifically in CIN. So I have some tangible ideas in place that I'm looking to increase the engagement of all members of CIN. The first is re-implementing CIN buttons. It was a program that we had at the very beginning of this session that kind of fizzled out. And so I'm going to bring it back with a slight twist. Since there are about half new senators and half the experienced senators in this session, I want to pair up a new senator with an experienced senator every week on a rotating basis so that new senators in the room have the opportunity to network and gain experience and as well as wisdom from experienced senators. And a couple of experienced senators continue building their social networks that they formed throughout the past sessions. Next, I want to implement formal social events and implement at least three of these per semester. Now, what these formal social events look like are social events that are subsidized in part by student merchandise sales. I hope to bring back, you know, big Senate sweatshirts, big uh, pins, or anything to express your, your interest in Senate and using those funds to at least in part help fund these social events. Think of a baseball game, cinema nights, all the discounted prices with those merchandise sales. And finally, I would encourage chairs and committees to hold informal social events. Think of these as like, you know, a profit share at Chipotle or a, a day of rock climbing with some of your committee members. Really encouraging these informal gatherings of people so that we all become friends as senators and not just um, have professional relationships on the Senate floor. So now that brings me into my final pillar, which is automation, which is really the mechanism as to how the other two platform pillars operate. So I have a three-phase plan to implement automation. The first part of this phase is visualization of parliamentary procedure. The second part of this phase is the automation of absences for all types of Senate meetings. And phase three is the voting process automation, as well as a live display of voting feeds. So let me, let me explain each of these a little bit further. The first one is parliamentary procedure visualization. As I'm sure all of you all know, with the last speaker election that we had, parliamentary procedure can be quite complicated at times. And so I want a fully displayed version of every procedure we go through in parliamentary procedure so that it's transparent and visual to everyone in the room. And more on that later on, because I have a presentation for you all, or a demonstration at the end of um, my presentation. Phase two is the automation of Senate absences. As of right now, it often took weeks for Senate absences to be tallied and notified to senators, which led to many senators in the 73rd session absencing out because they didn't know how many absences they had. And so I, I'm looking to develop a software that generates and sends emails to each and every one of you when you're absent in Senate that displays not only just the current absence that you got, but the total number of absences that you had, as well as how to appeal that absence. So we have a reduced turnover rate in Senate, which is a big problem in this last session. And finally, I'm looking to automate and visualize voting procedures. So think instead of having to vote for over a two-minute period and spend four or five minutes counting those votes, having an instantaneous result after those, that two-minute voting period so that we can move through Senate meetings more productively and efficiently. Also, I'm looking to pass a bill potentially to implement live voting counts by unscreening. This is something they currently do in the US Congress. And so if it's something that the Senate body here decides later on they want to be implemented in our meetings, I want to have the ability to display voting counts live on screen while they occur. And of course, as a quick caveat, all of these voting procedures will have very, very strict security measures because the integrity of our voting process is of the utmost importance as we go through our meetings. Before I continue, I want to put you all out to some letters of recommendation that are written on my behalf. These are all people that have served with me in the three other positions that I've held throughout my time in college. And so if you want to get more of an idea of some of the other activities I was involved with in my qualifications, please hit time to read these work letters. These individuals spend a lot of time working on them. And I would also like to introduce my third witness, Sam Jeffries, in a little bit. Um, he is he is a seventy-third session academic affairs chair. Sorry, Sam, I'm not, not quite yet. <laughs> but first, as promised, I wanted to give you a demonstration of the parliamentary procedure visualization. Because I can come up here and talk about automation and visualization and make all these promises, but to have, but I wanted to show you tangible results of what I'm looking to implement when I talk about parliamentary procedure visualization. So as we can see here, this is all the steps that have to go through in order to pass any piece of legislation on the other secretary, you think of resolutions, bills, or acts. And these are all the different 
motions that can be made on throughout the process. And so you can see here, it can be quite complicated. And so while we're going through these piece of legislation, as well as in the future election process, these confirmations, I want to have the full process displayed on screen. So after the reading of the piece of legislation, we move into a period of a 10 minute presentation displayed live on screen for everyone to see very transparently. And so moving on, after the pre-presentation, we go into a period of question and answer. And as you all know, question and answer, we use the start time, and when we get closer to the end of the time, someone makes a motion to extend because we have so many questions as as us curious students are. So let's say someone makes an emotion to extend the question and answer period by three minutes. We can pause the time here, go down here to extend or limit timing. And as you can see here, it requires a majority vote. And we can start a 30 second timer to tally votes for whether or not we should extend um, the timing of the debate round. And so if, if we decide to implement it, we'll, we'll have a live voting queue up here as well. Now let's say this passes. So we put that up here to the question and answer session and add the three minutes that was allocated seamlessly here. Start the time. And there we go. Three minutes have been added to your presentation. And so this, what this does is it helps us visualize where we're at in the legislative process, as well as how much time we have remaining in each section. So I'm going to pause that now and move on to debate negation one. And so when we get to the period of debate negation, oftentimes amendments are posted to pieces of legislation. So let's say an amendment is, is put here, and let's say an amendment for a secret ballot. That was something that happened very recently, was, was implemented. And so we can see here that we're now in debate negation on that amendment to print a secret ballot. And we can go through each of the stages of debate on that amendment specifically so that we so that we know what's part of the process we're at. Now let's say that an amendment on that amendment is made to have a secret ballot be displayed at a certain time, like let's say at the last meeting. So now we have we are in debate on the amendment on the amendment, all displayed very transparently to where we're at in that process. So if we come down here, and since it was a non-debatable, we go straight to the voting on the amendment to the amendment, have a 30 second timer to count votes on that. Display live if we, we have to do that. And after that, we can go right back into debate on the amendment and proceed through the debate rounds there. I'll go ahead and skip to the end for voting on the amendment. And then after we vote on the amendment, as we saw last time it passed. So now because that passed, we can go straight back to debate and negation one and continue on completely seamlessly with easy transition. So now after we go through all these pieces, we can finally vote on the piece. And if we so desire to have that vote tally displayed live on the screen during this two-minute process, and then right after the two minutes is up, we'll have the voting count, the voting tally count counted and ready to move on to the next piece of legislation to really increase the efficiency of the center. So now, Sam, now it's your turn. So you have to prepare your witness. Uh, so please, everyone, welcome to Sam Jeffers. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you so much for that period of presentation. Um, as was already decided, um, your character witness, Sam Jeffers, will have seven minutes, and your seven minutes will start at Howdy. Howdy, Sam. Howdy. 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 So for those who don't know, know me, I'm Sam Jeffers. Uh, in the 73rd session, I was the Act Affairs Chair, and in the 72nd session, I was just normal senator. And way back in the 72nd, um, it was, my, it was uh, during the first time attending a Senate meeting was when he was trying to get interested in being knowledgeable about what Senate was about. Um, so after he listened to our Senate meeting, he had so many questions, then we had to go to the chicken. And over a plate of chips and quesos, we talked about the structure, the impact, and the projects that Senate has going on. What really stood out to me during that conversation was his curiosity and his willingness to prepare for Senate. Um, and we could see his potential for growth and his ability to make real change in campus. And ever since then, I saw him grow um, by working really hard um, to create so many tangible changes uh, within and without Senate as a caucus leader for the College of Engineering. Uh, he excelled at developing well working relationships with the president of the Student Engineers Council and the vice president of Active Affairs and Engineering. Um, as many of you may know, we need partners um, not only within Senate, within student government, but also within the campus community. Um, through students, through student leaders, and through administration and faculty. 
Um, he's also pushed for various projects within his caucus and she made tangible results like you mentioned. Uh, the group study spaces within Zachary and mental health resources within the college engineering for students. Uh, he's also not only a really great person, but he excels at bridging divides, um, particularly within Senate. So uh, he reached out to many of y'all. Uh, so he really tries to take different perspectives from individuals from different caucuses and from different committees to form a vision of Senate. And that's one where everyone is valued. Uh, where everyone is engaged with their passions uh, and able to reach their full potential, like I've seen here and do this year. Um, and he's having the same conversation with y'all like, like I had with him about what are your hopes, what are your dreams, and what's your plans for Senate, um, which I think really goes to show his commitment to through engagement. Um, and also, he's taken all this feedback and through the plan of engagement, through the development of centers, through the accountability of leadership, and through the productivity and efficiency of logistics um, to, to give Kieran more time to interact with centers and help them pursue their goals. Uh, and on the development front, uh, he wants to see us with Senate buddies, like you all know. I love that program. I'm really sad to see it fizzle out. Um, but I think it's a great way of engaging senators and really sharing that experience we have with each other. Uh, also, with, on the subject of accountability, uh, setting chairs and senators up for success as they progress throughout their session. And identify areas where we're able to help them uh, and support them so all senators can reach their full potential. Uh, last one is really important to me, it's automation. So decreasing the workload on the logistics uh, that often burden the pro tem core with paperwork, limits their ability to focus on the development and social aspects of Senate. Um, this directly relates to my work automating Senate this year. Um, through input from Dr. Marwood from pro tem trust player and through Senator Tillis, um, I've helped develop two projects that uh, assist with voting and attendance this year. Um, this project I know Kieran will continue to work on and succeed with because he has the drive, the technical expertise, as we saw earlier, and the tangible examples um, that show this initiative. Also, Senate this year is in a position to create real change on campus. Um, and we can only do that through holding our leaders to clear and high standards. Um, without successful senators uh, as ourselves, the future of Senate. Um, we need to create higher engagement with y'all so we're able to create sustained change on campus. Um, so, for all those reasons and so much more, vote for my fellow senator and friend, Kieran Tillis. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Jeffress, for your character witness. And um, we will bring Senator Tillis back to the floor and we will enter a five minute Q&A. And with that, if anybody has questions, please use the raise hand tool in the chat. And okay, we have our first hand, Senate, Senator Wyatt Harlan. Um, please rise and ask your question and I will begin the time. Senator Tillett, or Senator Harlan off campus. <laughs> I have a question for you. So you mentioned having informal Senate events uh, for senators to build the board and get to know each other better. Do you plan on using precious uh, finances allocated for the seven fourth session for these events? I did not, Senator Harlan. Thank you for your question. Um, I would say that the formal social events is probably what I would spend the Senate's money on. And Senate's money, I, I guess, to quickly make a clarification for everyone in the room, Senate has its own personal account that can be added to for fundraisers that we do, and then Senate has allocations that finance share allocates. And so I'm looking to use the Senate funds to distribute um, Senate funds that we raise for fundraisers for formal social events specifically, and then have informal social events um, planned directly with, you know, Committees that are directly financed by any of those allocations. Thank you. Um, Senator Smith, you're the second person to raise your hand. Please rise and ask your question. Uh, Speaker Senator Smith, Trolls Caucus. Senator Tos, you, you mentioned automated voting trackers. How will that be relevant when we return to in person meetings with all in person and non digital voting? Yeah, thank you for your question, Senator Smith. I think one positive that we've had in this pandemic is really what we've seen, the ability of Senate meetings to be 
both like in terms of voting processes and in terms of allowing people to, to tune in online, for, especially for people who are on co ops or on internships that put, wouldn't normally be able to participate in it, they're now actively able to participate. And so I see many of the changes that we made this year being implemented going forward to the 74th session and keeping them because we've gotten to work better than normal processes. I'm well aware of the fact that in person ballots are typically used in a non COVID year, but I do hope to make automated voting on um, electronic voting. I want to make that a permanent feature of the Senate, um, particularly because it is such an efficient and effective way and also increases the security of the vote um, for some of the software I'm looking to implement. And so I think going forward, that's the best way we can we can go to be as efficient as possible. So. Um, Senator Dahl, um, you rose your hand next. If you can rise and answer your question, ask your question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Senator, I'm going to be honest, there is a lot of similarities between your presentation and the last presentation, uh, and there's a lot of ideas. All great ideas, don't get me wrong, but what do you believe makes you different from your opponent? Um, Se Senator Dahl, I do apologize for interrupting you, but we do have a point of order. Senator Gus Rodriguez, please rise and provide your point of order. Senator Rodriguez, Engineering Caucus. Uh, Senator Dahl did not ask permission to cut this. <laughs> As that is the case, um, you are out of order. Um, we do have additional questions to ask. So if you would like to rise and ask your question later down the line, that is an option. But at this moment, you cannot ask your question. Thank you. We'll lower your hand. Um, so the next person um, to speak would be Senator Mosley. Please rise. Senator Mosley, off-campus caucus. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, looking at your presentation where you start talking about the visual visualization of parliamentary <laughs> procedure, I absolutely love the idea of being more effective in our parliamentary procedure. However, the options you have are just a very small portion of parliamentary procedure options, as well as the greatest disconnect we have as a Senate body it's not knowing the rules of speaking, and that does not clarify rules of speaking. So, how do you believe that this small piece of parliamentary procedure will help us? Absolutely. Thank you for your question, Senator Mosley. Um, I would say that what I showed you tonight was really just a snippet of my overall plan for visualization policy. Um, sorry to interrupt you, Senator Tillis, but we do have a motion. Um, Senator Oldag, please rise and say your motion. Senator Oldag, College of Ag and Life Sciences. I move to exhaust the question. Do I see a second? Um, I see multiple seconds and an objection. Um, because there is an objection, we will have to vote by the yes, no feature on Zoom. Um, so we will just move. Um, so at this time, um, we do have a point of information from Senator Furrow. Um, please rise and ask your point of information. Uh, Senator Furrow, engineering focus. I don't know for the rest of the senators, but I don't see my screen, the, uh, the green and red button that we usually see to say on this vote. Thank you for that. Give us one moment and we will get that sorted. Um, give me one moment. Um, all right, at this time, Addy Senators, um, we it seems so that we do not have those yes, no features. Um, so at this point in time, what we'll do is we will vote by raised hand. Um, I do have, you know, documentation of everyone who did raise their hand when the exhaust the speaker list motion was made. Um, so at this point, I will lower everyone's hands. Um, and then following that, we will vote by raised hand. So if everyone can please lower their hands at this time. Um, we have a few more hands that we have to lower. lower. 
All right, now that we have all of those hands lowered, if you would like to vote for exhausting the speaker list, please raise your hand now um, and keep it up. Please do not put your raised hand down yet until asked to do so because we do need to count this by hand and we need it to be as accurate as possible. So I will give you guys five more seconds to raise your hand and following that, no one else should be raising their hand. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're counting, so give us a moment. Um, you may all um, lower your hands. Also, just to reiterate, um, please do not vote twice unless you are intentionally changing your vote. But um, please do understand that the number has already been decided for four. So please do not, you know, raise your hands twice. Um, I'll give you guys about five more seconds. And to be clear, the votes right now are for those against exhausting the speaker list. I'll give you all about five more seconds. Um, at this time, just to be clear, this is to not, um, Senator Smith, you may rise with your point of information. Senator Smith, Pulse Caucus, Madam Speaker, I'm sorry to delay more time, but I believe there are several senators who objected now voting to increase the time because they're confused. Um, I do, I can clarify right now, the vote that you all just did where you raised your hands was in support of exhausting the speaker list, which meant anyone who had their hand raised, those will be the only ones to ask a question. Um, but now we are voting to not exhaust the speaker list meaning if you are voting for this, you do not want to exhaust the speaker list, meaning we will continue on with our Q&A and that speaker list will we'll just keep going until time runs out. Does that clarify for everyone in the room and Senator Smith? Thank you. Um, with that, please stop messing with your hands. We will count the votes. <laughs> Um, so, um, to a vote, um, so we do have the vote counts. You may all lower your hands. Um, we did have a vote of 34 in favor and 11 against, um, which is well over a simple majority. Um, so we will be exhausting the speaker list. Um, I and um, Ops do have a picture of um, everybody who did have their hand raised. So at this point in time, we will not be using um, we will not be using the time, the time um, and the raised hand feature. We'll be calling those senators from a list. So with that being said, um, if everybody can lower their hands, um, that'll be fantastic. And just to clarify, um, exhausting the speaker list is actually a two thirds and we did hit that two thirds of 34 to 11. Um, so with that being said, I'll start calling senators' names in the order of their hands were raised when that motion was made. So um, Senator Mosley, um, you may rise to answer your question. Senator Mosley, off campus caucus, just to reiterate what the question was, it was with a, only a small portion of parliamentary procedures being next for availability to look at, how are we going to fix the lack of communication of not knowing both? Yeah, thank you for your question, Senator Mosley. I want to emphasize two big points real quick. Um, well, three points actually. One, I'm an engineer. Two, I am not a graphic designer. And three, I'm not a parliamentary procedure expert. Um, I use what I knew about coding software to give y'all kind of a prototype snippets of what, um, what could be done with helping to visualize parliamentary procedure. But I do host the one word of graphic designer to be the whole overall appeal um, a, a bit more appealing graphically and then work with um, able with parliamentary um, procedure expertise in the room to make sure all points like that are uh, adequately addressed. Thank you. 
Um, we will now go to the second senator who had their hand raised, which was Senator Ferro. Senator Ferro, please read. Senator Tina say, why are you running for this position? Thank you for your question, Senator Ferro. You know, <laughs> one philosophy I found to be very helpful coming in college was that with the representation hearing curriculum that I have and minors I'm pursuing, it, it's best, it would be best for me to pursue one leadership position per year to really put everything I have into. And so kind of going with that perspective, I served as the fish test up for my freshman year and the engineering process leader of Senate my sophomore year. And so going to junior year, I wanted a position that was gonna challenge myself. <laughs> and not only challenge myself, but be something that I believe I could handle, not just the, the initial responsibilities, but improve it um, for future years to come. And so when a few, a few fellow senators uh, talked to me, specifically at the pro tem role, and said, hey, you should, you should look into it. it. It might be something you want to pursue. Um, after looking into the position and really seeing all the different technical aspects with logistical framing experiences that I have with my internship and past leadership experiences, as well as the side of engagement, um, something that I was really, really excited and passionate about when I got into students, uh, having so many senators really engage me and help me develop as a better person, a book senator, and just general college student, I really saw the opportunity to use this position to affect change, both logistical level and um, help all senators in the room really to reach their fullest potentials. Thank you, Senator Jones. Thank you. With that, we'll go into the third senator that we had, and that will be Senator Hine. Senator Hine, Paul Spock, is Christian or um, so again, I, as a Senate body knew, um, I did work closely with the pro tem for uh, last session. Um, and something that I saw that the, the pro tem really needs is a big sense of humanity and like understanding that we're college students and understanding the pressures that the chairs go under. Um, I know we spoke about um, holding the chairs to 100% of the code responsibilities to start technically up to date, but that's another story for another time. Um, how are we? sure that you have these humanity skills and people skills in order to facilitate a healthy um, environment for our senators. Thank you for your question, Senator Ryan. That was a lot. So I'm going to see if I can bring up this way your question. Um, as far as like the humanity aspect, um, you know, I've had the awesome opportunity to serve with the engineering office leader and director of uh, the Fish Vets, um, the, finance, the financial director of Fish Vets. And so during both these roles, I really had the opportunity to, to serve as a leader to two different committees. Um, and really help encourage and engage them in pursuing the different responsibilities and goals that they have. Um, and so one thing that I really learned from both those experiences is that the best way to really help people fully obtain their visions right, and achieve all the responsibilities and goals that they have set out um, is to be as understanding as I can. And the way that I personally um, try to be as understanding as possible is by having one ones um, and so I've really had, I, I try to reach out to every single person in this room tonight, both in person and on the Zoom chat, um, and really get to know each and every one of y'all better. If you're a new senator, I really try to help y'all um, learn about Senate and all the different opportunities that it can present, um, like a lot of people like what Sam did for myself. Um, and so I think that forming you know, like personal relationships with people through community engagement for one-on-ones is really the best way that I bring my humanity forward. Um, and really help everyone um, in Senate reach those those large potential goals that we that we always set ourselves set, our, set for ourselves as ambitious students. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we'll go to Senator Manglalan. Thank you, Senator Galvez. Senator Galvez, off campus Senator Senator Tillis, for your past and current legislative actions as an engineering caucus leader, you shared you have acted and want to act reform responsibilities of caucus leaders in the Senate. With that being said, for your accountability platform, could you clarify on how you plan on reforming the role of caucus leaders in conjunction with reformations you also want to make with uh, committee chairs as well? Yeah, for your question, Sarah Mangle one, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, I, you know, as caucus leader, I've been in the position, not really doing a whole lot, not really having a big framework uh, in mind of the position, really just the position that we had, had any use or function for that. And so, what I really learned was over the semester, I decided to challenge myself and see what different directions I could take with the position. And so going into those directions, I've had many successes as well as, well as many failures. Um, and so kind of the conglomeration of those successes and failures was what I used to help put together and ultimately pass the Compensated Reformation Act. 
to really make the responsibilities of caucus leaders not only feasible, but also engaging. And a little bit ahead on that point of engaging. I think that the best way, and this is something I've learned in other positions that I've had as well, the best way to get to hold chairs accountable to the responsibilities that they have is to really make those responsibilities engaging as possible. And so, like Chair Hine, or excuse me, Senator Hine mentioned earlier, um, a lot of the responsibilities are a little bit outdated. So I think one of the first things we need to do um, in this 74th session is really reform some of those responsibilities and make every one of those positions very engaging so that people that are in those chair positions can really run with those positions and help, you know, help them meet those responsibilities and help take those chair positions in new directions um, for this session. So I want to take that kind of those lessons I learned from the caucus for being a caucus leader and really apply them to my um, role as a person for going forward. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll go to Senator Hines, Nick Hines. Senator Hines, um, because it's coming. I was, uh, Senator Stillis, I was wondering if you could um, elaborate on your um, on the impact that your role as Fitch Fest Director of Finance had on the class of 2023, given that that, that extra did not occur last year due to uh, COVID restrictions. Yeah, thank you for your question, uh, Senator Hines. Um, you know, that position was probably one of the most leadership positions I've ever held. Um, like you said, the event ultimately didn't happen. But what I really, what I was really so proud about um, in that position were two main things. Um, the first being the amount of money that we raised in the fundraising that we put on. We raised about, I think, $10,000 in thought for the class of 2023, which was unprecedented. The previous class before us finished, and I believe, a $3,000 debt coming out of that year. Um, but second, I really feel like I established a groundwork for that position going forward. I wrote, I think, a, a, a 10 page um, pass down for that position of all the different things that I've learned, both in managing a committee as well as in managing the initial responsibilities of the role and then the responsibilities that were set on top of that. You know, I implemented things like sponsorship packages and like that around 300 companies on my committee um, to help reach out and um, get sponsorship for the event. I, um, I managed two fundraisers that, that raised significant funds to profit. And I used the lessons I learned and really tried to help build up the next person who took that foot on position this year. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. With that, we'll go to Senator Oldag. Senator Oldag, College of Academic Sciences. Permission to preface. Your permit is granted. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot of really great ideas and all these um, leadership experience. Uh, have you reached out to anyone on the operations committee, considering you're seeking to lead a committee that you've never served on? And then my follow-up question to that is, the operations team is really strained during general meetings. Um, so have, again, have you talked to any of the operations committee about the logistics and tenability of your ideas? Um, not directly. You know, I, I thank you for your question, Senator Holdag. I'll answer that in two parts. One is that I reached out to the previous four speaker pros and fours um, and really got their input into the position um, and how to manage both logistics side and engagement side of um, operations and just the other responsibilities of the pros and four role. And um, second, I would say that, you know, the, the operations committee is something that's, I guess, relatively new to the position. Um, and so, while I haven't reached out directly to any of them, I do plan to do so going forward, um, just for the time constraints I had, um, being both a student um, and wanting to reach out to all the senators in the room first as my main priority, um, and really get to know some people in the room. But I do plan to reach out to them um, going forward with the decision. Thank you. Following that, we'll go to Senator Syed. Senator Syed, Office Caucus, could you identify specific ways? I know you've talked about it a little bit more, uh, but in just detail, what kind of steps have you taken to go over and beyond in your past leadership roles? Yeah, thank you for your question, Senator Syed. Um, so, the starting, I guess, with my Fitchcraft Science Director position, um, I, had, I had talked to you the first time with uh, the previous Fitchcraft Science Director. Um, who gave me a little folder that said, you make a budget of the event, you have $5,000, and that's your job. That's all you have to do. Um, and so really working with you, Senator Syed, in your role as class president, as well as many other people, 
I wanted to make that role something that could actually make an impact on students as opposed to just being a small um, budget grading uh, position. And so I expanded on that. I hosted, I, I helped manage a large scale logistics of fundraisers, staying hours and hours um, after each of those fundraisers, tallying individual forms and, and um, receipts to make sure all the finances were in range for those, for those fundraisers. That was something that was not required by me whatsoever, but I did take that initiative. Um, furthermore, I also utilized my committee um, in helping to put on that, that, um, the responsibilities of it. Um, one thing we had to do was reach out to 300 to 400 companies. That was not something that was, you know, set out in the rule book. That was something that I wanted to do um, to reach out and create sponsorship packages so that the event not only be funded by our own dollar, but by the dollars of companies um, to, make it, to make a better experience for Texas A&M students. And so it, it's both the people skills that I developed in helping to um, manage the members of the committee and put on additional fundraisers that I took from a position that was really just about creating a simple um, uh, it's a simple energy. And then I guess then you on to the engineering office leader position. Um, that was a position that quite literally had no responsibilities laid out other than a vague requirements to meet with a certain uh, the student engineers caucus every other week. Um, that hasn't been enforced um, since caucus leaders have been implemented. And so I've taken that position, I formed like I you all saw my presentation, I formed, I did a bunch of different things. I won't go too specifically to those, but I've covered them already. But I, I reached I went above and beyond trying to make the role something and then also reformat it for future years to come. Um, so that anyone who serves as the engineering office leader or any office leader can really um, better serve the, the, the student body and the constituents that elect us to these, to these offices. Thank you for your question. Absolutely. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so following that, we have um, Senator Fisher. Senator Fisher off campus progress. Thank you for sharing your plan uh, to automate some of the aspects of the Charlie Pro. Um, my question for you is Do you have a plan to educate senators um, as to how to use Charlie Pro, not just giving them tips on a uh, screen? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for your question, Senator Fisher. Um, I really, really hope to work very, very closely with um, the next course regulation schedule like after this election. Um, to really see that implemented. Because I know coming into as an engineer, I had no idea what public procedure was or any, any part of how it works. And so I want to, I think that responsibility falls more under the line of the chair of the rules and regulations committee. But what I will do is assure you that um, through making sure they're following their, with, their, with that chair's position's responsibilities, I will really work to make sure everyone in the room. Um, both new experience fully understand parliamentary procedure, both through visualization on screen and um, just in parent knowledge um, through some of those workshops. Thank you, Senator. Um, and now we have our final senator, Senator Ufudiyama. Uh, senator Ufudiyama, all campus office. In your presentation, where you mentioned wanting to keep chairs accountable for all requirements outlined by the code of position, how do you plan on doing the same thing for senators who don't see the well, thank you for your question, um, Senator. Um, sorry, I've been out of time seeing your, your name. I'm a little, little blind up here. Um, oh, you, <laughs> you, you thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> uh, I didn't give you context. Um, but to answer your question, um, you know, I think kind of being in this past session and unfortunately seeing a lot of people both in the engineering politics as well as in in general, I'm um, out of Senate, one, due to kind of being overwhelmed by the whole process and Having other requirements of students. And so I think very specifically that chairs, um, because they are elected by Senate to serve very specific roles, need to be held to those responsibilities as best as possible. But I really want to emphasize that the responsibilities of like, general senators are something I don't want to be as you know strict and strict about. It's something I want to hopefully um, through my some ideas for engagement like city buddies, really encourage senators to pursue the various different um, goals and ideas they had coming in. And kind of get them to, I guess, for lack of a better word, buy into Senate. Because I know for me, I definitely struggled with when I first got to Senate, especially with it being online over the summer, with really finding that buy in and really the, the willpower to start doing things in the position. And so I think it's much more important, uh, at least for me personally, it's much more important to focus on engaging senators rather than hold them very strictly to the responsibilities laid out. Thank you. With that, that was our last question on our speakers list and the period of Q&A has come to a close. We will now move into a period of debate which requires so if everyone can please come to order, remain seated 
And we will now begin with our next order of business. Howdy. Howdy. Thank you. There's the welcome I was looking for. Um, we will now end the recess. We are now um, coming back to the meeting and continuing with our agenda. And our next item will be to vote for the rules and regulations chair. So now the floor will be open for nominations. So if you would like to nominate anyone for this position, raise your hand. Thank you, Senator Smith. Um, please rise. For the position of rules and regulations chair, I nominate Megan Hine. Senator Hine, do you accept this nomination? I do. Thank you. With that, do we have any additional nominations for the rules and regs position? Seeing no hands raised, um, Senator Hine is the only um, person nominated. So with that, we'll go into a period of presentation by her. And to preface, so Senator Hine, please come to the floor, get your presentation set up. Um, let us know if you would like to share that presentation for you or if you'll share that yourself. I'll go ahead and share it myself. Alrighty, and I would like to make it clear that as this is an uncontested race, um, Senator Hine has five minutes um, for her presentation. And if she chooses to have a character witness, they will have to present out of her five minutes. Um, and now that I do have a pro tempor, um, she will be keeping um, the time. I will also take time, but she will be sending those updates for you all in the chat. So with that, you have five minutes starting at Howdy. All right, so me, Howdy. My name is Megan Pine, and I'm a senator from the Coles Caucus. Um, just a few things. Please don't extend my time. I know we have a bunch of other things to get through, so trust me, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear, I don't want y'all to hear me talk more than you have to. Um, I've spoken enough tonight. Um, and I will forego my character witness. Um, he said that he went, really wanted to share two words about me, but I was like, now we have five minutes. So, um, <laughs> so um, I ran over this last time when I was running for speaker. I'm, I'm an agricultural economics major from Southern Texas. I'm also a first generation college student. Um, and to give you a little spice in my presentation, I went with another fun fact. I was a pageant girl. Shocking. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Please ask to my TR collection. I'm begging you. Oh, I love being a pageant girl, but I'm never again. Um, <laughs> um, a little about my student senate involvement. If you would have told me um, as a freshman senator that I would become the world of regulations chair in the 73rd and then be free running to be elected into the 74th as well as the chair. I told you you're crazy. Um, I thought the code was really complex, really hard to learn. Um, the only thing that I had really going for me is my parliamentary procedure. Thankful for my FFA teacher in high school giving me the traumatic experience of Robert Hill's order. In the 73rd, I also balanced a little bit. Um, I was a member of the core body subcommittee, which recognizes students, um, present and former students, based on our core values. Um, and I also served as the chair for the J Court Justice Confirmation Subcommittee, which is actually um, a direct responsibility of the World of Regulations Chair. And I'm actually going through that process again um, right at this time because um, we have some justices to appoint. So um, enough about student senate involvement. Just laying out some uh, World of Regulations Chair responsibilities. Um, we are the main parliamentarian in the Senate room. Um, we help you learn. Um, I'm in charge of the code for all branches of SGA, including um, the executive cabinet. I worked really well with uh, the executive vice president this year in order to get that done. Um, I ask if you have a question about the code or parliamentary procedure, I'm your first person to go to and get that answer for you. Um, I update the code frequently, making sure that everyone has an updated version. Um, I am actually the main facilitator of development days, so I've actually had the experience to have four development days under my belt now. Um, so I've learned what works, what doesn't, and so I am excited to bring that to you next for this session. Um, and then we break down parliamentary procedure to make sure it's easier for your understanding because I know it's hard. Um, a few goals that I have in mind, um, a lot of it has to continue from what I've done in the 73rd. Um, I've created this really cool parliamentary procedure guide that I plan on putting in a Senate re Senator resources folder in the drive um, if I'm elected or even if I'm not for whatever reason. Um, it will still be there. <laughs> um, 
for um, I'm working on a code guide. That's something that I've kind of been a little lagging on in the 73rd session, but it will be done for the 74th. Um, I've been able to actively recognize improvements where we can be a little more efficient in Senate meetings. Um, something that I did in the 73rd session that worked really well that I plan on bringing to the 74th is that if there's a piece of parliamentary procedure that senators like aren't getting or forgetting, um, I normally put a little presentation together, two to three minutes in open forum um, to make sure that we're catching it while we're ahead um, and making sure that the meetings flow efficiently. Um, and I mean, some of you like know there's a bunch of or a few senators that have like served in the 73rd and the 70, 72nd and the 73rd. Um, and our meetings this session or last session have been really smooth compared to what they were in the 72nd. Um, and then something that I just recently found out as World and Regulations Chair with the 73rd session is our SGA grant bylaws are not up to date. So that's something that I really want to work on um, if I'm elected into this role as the World and Regulations Chair for the fourth session. And with that, I'm sorry, Senator Harlan. Um, but I don't have questions. Let him speak. <laughs> <laughs> So with that, the speaker is, the presenter is open to questions. Um, there is a five minute Q&A period. So if you have any questions, raise your hand now. Um, seeing as there are no more questions, um, we will close that period of Q&A. And as she is the only candidate, there will be no debate. We'll go straight into voting. Um, so if pro tempore Marbit can send that link for this ballot, we will get to voting. And if we can have Senator Hines send out the room, thank you. Um, Senator Harlan, while you did not speak, um, I do think I still may be required to kick you out of the room. I do apologize. And that ballot has been sent. You have until 917 to turn that in. Uh, thank you for all those messages. Give me one moment. Sorry, the ballot is now open. I forgot that I have edit access now. So it is open. Thank you so much, Pro Tempore. <laughs> We have about one more minute of voting, so please get your votes in. Senator Hine back into the room, our new rules and regs chair. <laughs> Congratulations, Senator Hine. You will now be sworn in as the rules and regs chair by Chief Justice McIntosh. I state your name. I, Megan Hine, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear to faithfully execute to the best of my ability, to faithfully execute to the best of my ability, the duties of the office of 
Rules and Regulations Chair, the duties of the Office of Rules and Regulations Chair for the Texas A&M University Student Government Association, for the Texas A&M University Student Government Association, to uphold the honor of the same, to uphold the honor of the same, at all times to protect the welfare of the student body, to at all times protect the welfare of the student body, and to promote good relations, and to promote good relations between the students, between the students and those concerned with the university. <laughs> and those concerned with the university. Congratulations. Congratulations once again, Chair Hine, um, as our new rules and regs, rules and regulations chair. With that, we'll continue on with our agenda um, and we will move to the academic affairs chair election and we'll open up that floor to nominations. Um, we do have a hand raised. Senator Farrow, would you like to rise and say your nomination? Senator Farrow, Engineering Caucus, I nominate Sam Jeffries for the academic affairs chair. Senator Jeffress, please rise and let us know if you accept this nomination. And Jeffress, College of Engineers, I accept the nomination. Wonderful. Um, you all both may be seated. Um, at this time, do we have any more additional nominations? Seeing that there are none, we will go straight into a period of presentation. So Senator Jeffress can come to the floor um, and can set up for his presentation. And as a reminder, you will have a five minute presentation in which you can allocate some of that time to a character witness. Will you be screen sharing? Yes. Wonderful, so get that shared and your five minutes will start at howdy. <clears throat> Howdy, Senate. Uh, so to start off, uh, I'm Sam Jeffers. I'm uh, a computer science major, class of 2022. Uh, I'm hometown of Houston, Texas. And a fun fact about me is I have a twin brother that goes here. He's a chemical engineer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so he's here on camera and say, hey, Sam. And he goes, what? <laughs> Probably no. Um, yeah. So, on, so these are my highlights from our past two years in the Senate. Uh, I think I hopefully accomplished a lot of um, meaningful changes within the Senate and the university. Uh, so see here, uh, some of my highlights that I like to point out are minimum syllabus requirement change. So if you guys heard your syllabi um, this year, you saw a mental health statement. That was something that myself and the three second thing that I think a fair chair did um, help make a spread awareness of mental health resources at the university. Um, one thing that I also like to highlight is the so uh, acronym accommodations. So at I think 3 a.m. on that Monday morning, an email went off to the faculty senate and to the provost office asking for um, a stay of all assignments. Um, also, I have a lot of meetings, so I touch on all of these. So some of these are a topic of discussion. Some of them are I'm partnering with other chairs. Um, and then some are just unsuccessful projects I try. Um, so the big things I work on my committee this year are working with other chairs to uh, develop our senators. So that's talking about how to advocate for your uh, agenda, how to write emails and take notes and set meetings for administration, <laughs> how to contact administration. Um, and I think all these things will be really awesome in our professional growth and also our ability to make change happen on campus. Another big thing that any of my members will tell you is I'm huge in individual projects. I think it really helps grow senators. Um, it also gives everyone an opportunity to make a real change on campus. Um, and I'm pretty good to work with other individuals within Senate. So you build those relationships and um, grow yourself. Um, the last one is social events. Um, so I think it's really awful that we don't have a lot more social events because we're over here banning each other um, every other week. And it can form a lot of animosity towards one another. So humanizing each other, uh, I think it's very beneficial for everyone. Uh, so my advisor gave some amazing advice, and he said shoot it. Because um, I think this past year, I did a great job of building connections, of having the experience of working with different individuals across campus. 
Um, so my three big things this year are my council additional resources. Um, so I'm sure Colana who is on the Zoom call and he knows that we're trying really hard um, to assess on our council right now and develop some resources that can help them. But at this point, it's kind of hard to say what is the best resources to make. So is that a website change? Is that additional pamphlets that we can develop about how to go about our council process? Or do we need more support like a student organization or advisor or something like that? Next one is a one-time exemption Q drop. Um, so this is an idea we stole from the University of Texas. <laughs> and uh, pretty much it allows individuals to Q drop a class on a single <coughs> law deadline. Uh, or this possibly was as a equivalent, um, so a withdrawal in a different category. Um, so with a one class withdrawal. And so I guess to help students who um, become academically distressed near the end of the course um, and have missed that key drop deadline. And the last one is reduction of the educational platforms. So personally, I'm using, I think, seven different platforms. Uh, and some of the pay forms I don't. And I think it's really awful that you can't have one place to go to. Uh, so this is the assignment, and these are when they do, this is when they're due, and these are tests. And also, I think it's even worse that some of these uh, educational platforms are required for you to pay to get access to your homework. Um, so if individuals are financially strained, or even if, um, if, if even if it's like a textbook, like we can send images of those questions to each other. But if it's an educational platform like this, you can't have access to it unless you pay it 90 bucks, that 100 bucks, that 25 bucks to get access to it. Um, now I'd like to give the rest of my time my carefulness, which is how much I have left? Five seconds. <laughs> you know what? I think she's good. <laughs> uh, I would like to say a huge shout out to all of my carefulness and letters of recommendation, all members of my committee, and our wonderful supporters of mine. Senator Jeffress, um, for that great presentation. Um, you may now exit the room. Oh, wait, no, please come back. You do have a period of question and answer. So please come back. Um, we do have a period of question and answer for five minutes. Does anyone have any questions? If so, please raise your hand in the chat. Going once, going twice. Seeing none, now you may exit the room. Thank you, Senator Jeffress. Um, so with that being said, um, the ballot the ballot will be sent into the drive and open into the chat and sub, um, open momentarily. That ballot link has been sent in the Zoom chat and it is open. Uh, we will leave this ballot open until 927. So please get all of your votes in. 927, 928, we'll see. It is 927. I'm going to give you all another 10 seconds to get your votes in. Um, with that countdown, we will be closing the ballots. Perfect. Um, so Senate um, Pro Tempore, 
Speaker pro tem for Marbit, would you like to read out the results? <laughs> Um, I would have to send her jet first to the waiting room, but, <laughs> but with a vote of 60 in favor and one in abstention, can we please have Senator Jeffress back into the room? <laughs> All rise. Congratulations, Senator Jeffress. You have been voted as the Academic Affairs Chair and will now be sworn in by Chief Justice McIntosh. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Sam Jeffress. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the Office of Academic Affairs Chair. The duties of the Office of Academic Affairs Chair. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. For the Texas A&M Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times for the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations now, Chair Jeffress. Um, from there, we will continue on with our agenda and move into a period of community relations chair elections. So at this time, the floor is open for nominations for the community relations position. Um, Senator Sophia Chunga Pizarro, you have the floor. Um, please um, rise and say your nomination. Senator Chunga Pizarro off campus caucus, I'd like to nominate Alex Senator Alexia Hernandez for Community relations. Senator Hernandez, please rise. Do you accept this nomination? Senator Hernandez, Liberal Arts Caucus, I do accept this nomination. Fantastic. Um, you both may be, may be seated. Um, at this time, are there any additional nominations for this position? Seeing that there are none, we will go straight into a period of presentation by Senator Hernandez. So if you can come to the floor and get your presentation set up, would you be um, going through your presentation on your own or would you like us to share that for you? I'm on my own, thank you. Perfect. Um, and with that, um, you are the only one running for this race. So you have a five minute presentation period time and your character witness will come out of that and you have five minutes starting at Howdy. All right, thank you very much. Howdy Senate. Hi. Uh, my name is Alexia Hernandez. Uh, I'm a liberal arts senator, um, and I am running to be the next community relations uh, committee chair. So a little about me, like everyone else has been doing. Um, I figured you'd want to get to know somebody behind just the senator title. So uh, my major is international studies, class 2022. I have a bunch of um, different interests. I like to delve in a lot. And a fun fact about me is I've climbed the tallest mountain in Wales. Um, these are just some pictures from some travels that I've done that I thought were in the side of the region. <laughs> um, I'm going to brush through this really quickly because I'd rather talk about CR and not myself, but um, I have a lot of involvement in a bunch of different organizations. Uh, I've been in the Senate President's Council. I am the next president. Um, I am in, I was in the SGA Diversity Commission uh, as the CT member, and I was a lead for the Council for Northern Student Affairs. Um, outside experience, I worked on a congressional campaign full time while attending school last year. Um, I also currently am an intern um, with the House of Representatives I'm in the district office, talk to a lot of constituents and community members. And um, I also volunteered with the Brazos Interfaith Immigration Network as an Allies in Action volunteer, um, helping um, immigrants uh, learn English to better advocate for children. So, um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about CIA. So um, I have a lot of ideas for CR. Uh, previously, um, CR had pretty much been a very inactive uh, committee until um, Cheryl O'Reilly had, had come into play and started uh, kind of doing some advocacy around the room. So we probably either heard about the room or haven't heard about the room. It's basically a, um, an ordinance that is proposed in the city of College Station to limit certain neighborhoods in College Station from four unrelated people to two unrelated people living in a household. Now you can probably see why that's pretty problematic for a lot of us students. Um, and so um, we have been doing a lot of organizing trying to um, prevent this, this group from passing. Um, so 
very recently, about two weeks ago, I started a, um, a group, a very decentralized group, not only with Senate members, but from people outside of Senate, local community members that are interested in advocating against this um, resolution. I'm sorry, against this, uh, against this ordinance. And the reason why this has to do with community relations is because um, part of our role is to not only um, be in touch with the community, but also be in touch with the local politics in the city of Bryan, the city of College Station. And so, of course, we are very interested in this. I've been working on this for a while, um, which um, former chair um, Oleg has been uh, spearheading. So um, basically, my plan for this is to continue the work that I've been doing. I've been in very close contact with uh, local community members. Um, prominent community members within Bryan and College Station to make sure that this doesn't pass or at least try our best. Um, we do have some upcoming city council meetings that we will be having a coordinated effort to speak on, which is April 15th and April 19th, and that is part of my principal plan to at least voice for the student opinion um, against this ordinance. Um, we also have, uh, let's say, monthly and on-demand community updates is something I really want to bring. Um, students don't know how to participate in local politics or don't care unless they're informed. They're not going to go and look and go and look at these agendas, these like 10, 12 item city council agendas. Nobody has time for that, right? But I really think that that's something that we should be spearheading and that we should honestly be um, compiling, breaking down, and delivering to students instead of waiting for them to get involved. We need to be the ones that reach out to them to, to get them mobilized um, and, and give them pathways to do that. So. Um, I plan to do this by utilizing social media, um, hopefully working with the pro temp to um, give out some monthly updates about what's going on in the city of College Station, in the city of Bryan, um, not only with political uh, happenings, but also on local events, supporting our local community and supporting our local economy, especially with this pandemic. Um, so um, highlighting small businesses, things like First Friday and Bryan, so getting um, some students uh, involved in their local community outside of Texas right now. And I also want to build a nonpartisan student-focused reputation. I want to build a reputation of that students care and students really want to actively engage in the community outside of just being students. And so this means talking to city council members, commissions and committees, chamber of commerce, and local business. And I have some rec letters of recommendation that y'all are free to read. Um, they're from really amazing people in all sorts of leadership positions, including my former boss. So yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, and then I do have a character witness about seeing as I am almost out of time. I think she's with the still her seat as she was holding. So um, thank you so much. And I am open for questions. The speaker said it herself. She is open to questions. We do have a five minute Q&A period. So please raise your hands if you have any questions. Seeing that there are none, we will now enter a period of voting. So if Senator Hernandez and her character witness can please exit the room. Once that has happened, um, Speaker Pro Tem Hort, Marbit can go in and lead us in the voting process. Okay, that ballot is open. The link is sent in the chat, and let's try and have that done by 
pocket. Congratulations to Senator Hernandez. If someone can bring her in the room and if all can rise. Congratulations, Senator Hernandez. Um, you have been elected as our new community relations chair and you will now be sworn in. All right, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Alexia Hernandez. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of, state your office. The duties of the office of community relations chair. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. Congratulations to now Chair Hernandez. We will now continue on with the rest of our agenda and we will move into the elections for our finance chair. So with that being said, the floor is now open for nominations for the finance chair position. Do we have any nominations for the finance chair at this time? I see a hand raised. Senator Fisher, please rise and give your nomination. Senator Fisher, Off-Campus Caucus. I nominate Emma Mosley for the position of finance chair. Senator Mosley, please rise and let us know, do you accept this nomination? I accept. Wonderful. Uh, now you may both be seated. Do we have any other nominations at this time for the finance chair position? Seeing that we have none, Senator Mosley, you may come to the floor for your presentation. And you all know the drill at this point, she will have a five minute presentation and you know can allocate that time to her character witness as she wishes. Um, and Senator Mosley, would you like us to share your presentation or will you share that on your own? Uh, I can share it. Thank you. Your five minutes will begin at howdy. and I'm very excited to have the nomination to run for finance chair. I promise not to bore all of you talking about a lot of finance, so we'll run through this pretty quickly. A little bit about me, I am an agribusiness major and I have a minor in agriculture food sales. I grew up in a very small town in South Texas called George West. Not anywhere close to Georgetown, don't get it confused. <laughs> right between San Antonio and Corpus. I live my life based off of my values. There's something I hold true to me. They all have very unique definitions. We can talk about those later, but they're all going to be loyalty and belief. 
little fun fact about me. I grew up raising and breeding show pigs. There's a picture of me cutting off an umbilical cord if you didn't believe me. <laughs> um, a little bit of my experience. I had the honor of serving on the 73rd session finance committee. Uh, finance committee is very unique in the fact that we start and we're very heavy in the very beginning of the year. So because I had the opportunity to serve, I feel like it will be a flawless transition. I don't, there will not be a learning curve there. I'm also on the Texas a and Pulse Council, which is the College of Ag and Life Sciences Council. Um, I'm a two-year two -year member of that finance committee as well, which runs very similar to our finance committee here. We are given a certain amount of money to like, allocate to all of the organizations in the College of Ag. I had the opportunity of being a Texas FFA board of director. And on that, I also served on the finance and budgeting <laughs> committee. If you don't know what Texas FFA is, I served on a multi million dollar nonprofit organization budgeting committee. So there's a lot of finance that was done in that. And it's a really cool opportunity to see what I'll be doing here at a very large scale. And recently, I now have the opportunity to be a credit and lending intern this summer. So I'll be learning a lot this summer that I know will be applicable to my time in SGA. Um, committee goals, we're gonna run through these pretty quickly and go to the one I find most important. So this is allocations. Our job as the finance committee is to make sure that every dollar entrusted to us is allocated. I can look at that. But my biggest point is sustainability. So I believe every year we are given $50,000 and the student, the finance committee does a great job making sure all of that is allocated. But it is not our job to make sure it is all spent. So there's a big gap every year in how much is allocated versus how much is actually spent. So my goal as finance chair would be to make sure we start doing, doing more sustainable financial allocations. So at the bottom right here, I put our priorities to make a difference today, yet we have the capability of making the impact tomorrow. So what I mean by that, to give a few examples of what I mean by sustainable funding, is take, for example, Career Closet. There's a lot of talk about headshot programs. We have the ability to fund something like that. They could be asking us for camera equipment, SD cards, backdrops, things like that that are tangible items that will last for many years to come. Also, carpool, every single year they ask us for green slips of paper, every year. Those green slips of paper are what are used and they have a student get in the car and they fill that out and they keep that on file. Well, that's a great system and it's worked for them to be more sustainable. Economically, they could start purchasing more computerized systems. They should be purchasing iPads to keep in the car where that file is kept digitally and more permanently. Um, involvement. Uh, this year, I hope that our committee can be more active throughout the entire year rather than just really heavy at the beginning. I hope we can be a service, or we will be working to be more of a service for the student organizations throughout the entire year, whether they have questions on reallocations. Um, here's a couple of my letters of recommendation. And I also have my good friend, Mr. Wyatt Harlan, as a character witness. How much time do I have? 45 seconds. 45 seconds. Wyatt, you want to speak for 45 seconds? <laughs> it might be the shortest time anybody has ever asked me to speak. But I would love to speak on your behalf. Um, I've known Emma for roughly three years now, and I can honestly say that it is one of my greatest honors in Senate to be her character witness. Uh, Emma has been one of the most loyal. Uh, most integrity filled friends I've ever had, but she is the kind of friend who is going to get you back in line if you step out of line. She's not afraid to keep you accountable and hold you to uh, your standards and morals. Um, when she mentions her three values, she not only uh, says that those are her values, she lives through those authentically. And I cannot wait to see uh, what she does. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Well, thank you, and I'm open to any questions. As the speaker said, she is open to questions, and there is that five-minute five period of question and answer, so please raise your hands if you have one. Seeing that there are none, um, Senator Mosley and Senator Harlan, if you both can please exit the room as we proceed with voting.
All right, y'all, we have entered a uh, period of voting. Let's get those votes in by 9.50. Give me two minutes, and then just send the link in the chat. Congratulations. You will now be sworn in. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I am a mostly. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the Office of Finance Chair. The duties of the Office of Finance Chair. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association for the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times, at all times, times to protect, protect the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations now, Chair Mosley. And with that, we'll move into our next period of elections, the Constituency Affairs election. Um, so at this time, we will be taking nominations for this position. I see we already have a raised hand. Senator Tillis, do you mind rising and sharing your nomination? Senator Tillis, Engineering Caucus. I nominate Senator Farrow of the Engineering Caucus for the position of Constituency Affairs Chair. Senator Farrow, do you accept this nomination? Senator Farrow, Engineering Caucus, I accept the nomination. Thank you. You both may be seated. Um, at this time, do we have any additional nominations for the constituency affairs position? Seeing that there are none, we will now go into a period of presentation by Senator Farrow. So if you may come to the floor to get your presentation started. And please let us know, would you like us to share your presentation for you or will you share it yourself? I will be sharing the presentation myself. Thanks. Fantastic. And with that being said, you will have five minutes of presentation starting at Howdy. Thank you. 
Howdy, Senate. Howdy. Howdy. My name is Victor Ferro. I'm a mechanical engineer, engineering major, class of 23. And I'm here today to present you my plan for the Constituency Affairs Chair for the 74 session. In this slide, you can see my involvement and experience uh, throughout my time here at Aguilar. I would love to, if you have any questions, to ask me during the period of question and answers, because I want to focus more uh, the time of my presentation on my actual plans. Okay. Here, as we can see, as an engineer major, I like numbers. So I took the data that we have collected from the past year of the actual student involvement on SCA affairs. As we can see, only 12% of our student population participated in the past spring election, which is an extremely low and even lower turnout than we have last year. And from the ag input responses, yes, that number is real. I did the math. We are having less than 2.2% of participation of the student body, which means that the information that we get through that platform is not helpful to. to it's not helpful to us to make a decision based on what the student body thinks. And personally, I've given thought to this, and I think it's mainly because as a student government, we have, for the past years, have kind of like a mentality per se, that we kind of wait for the students to come to us instead of going and reaching out to them and be present on campus. So to make these numbers change, I, propose that we change the way how the SGA interacts with the student body. And how we're gonna do that? By instead of waiting for them to come to us, us proactively, proactively going out there and be present on campus and start conversations. So that way we can actually see what are the problems that the students are going through. And here we can take decisions and tangible actions to make the experience of every single ID the best as possible. During their four, maybe a little bit more times here at Texas AM. And here's my plan for this year. It's based on three main topics engagement, representation, and connection. The first one, engagement. I want to focus the engagement in two parts. The first one, the collaboration between the caucus leaders and the CA committee to increase the interaction between senators and students. How we're going to, how I plan to do this by doing activities like coffee with your senators. Two years ago, when I got here, the SVP at the time had uh, an event that was cookies with the SVP. I thought that idea was really good because actually you can see your elected representative in a more humane way, and you can actually see them as a student that same as everybody here has same the same problems, the same going through like test, exam, a crazy week. So doing those type of events, call ball, table, we can actually increase our visibility and students can actually see us in a more humane way. So that way they're gonna be more likely to approach us. The other aspect of this platform of the engagement at the part is increase our presence in social media. I look forward to work with the Pro Temple, the Pro Temple Marble, in, to increase in our social media. Because as the 21st century, everything runs through social media. And our Instagram and Twitter account, sadly, they just have like 600 followers and 1,800 followers, which it's basically nobody in campus. Taking into consideration that we have a population of 71,000 71, students. So through live stream videos, video updates, changing the way we deliver ad input, we can definitely increase or reach the student body. If you have more questions about this, I would love to hear the question and answer to give more. But I want to keep going to the rest of my presentation. This one, if you guys want to know more about this, please ask me because there's a really good idea. But because of time constraints, I cannot go super into that. But definitely, that's something I plan to do to change the way we develop the, uh, we put out there the ID. The other part is representation. Even though we have 14 caucuses here at the Student Senate, among those caucuses, there are a lot of subgroups that most of the time get ignored because we focus on the main 
Senator Darrow, you do have 10 seconds and I do see a motion. Um, Senator Tillis, do you mind sharing your motion? Uh, Senator Tillis, engineer and pockets, I move to extend the period of presentation by four minutes. Um, so he does move to extend it. Seeing an objection, um, we will have to um, submit a ballot. Um, so for that, if our pro temp and ops can send in a the emergency ballot we created, um, we will get that voted on for this motion. Give us one moment. <laughs> Um, Senator, please be patient with us. We do want to make sure we get you all that ballot and make sure it's correct. No. So with that being said, that motion does pass. Senator Farrow has an additional four minutes for his presentation. Um, and now you may continue. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I promise I'm going to be way more short of these parts. So as I was saying, with the collaboration between the caucus leaders and the consistency affairs, I plan to start a conversation with those subgroups using the consistency affairs caucus so that way all of the all the problems or things that are facing the students, we can actually get that information and achieve positive change to them. And lastly, my the last aspect of my platform is connection. If we do, and we will do all the plans that I proposed before, the communication channels are going to create themselves naturally. And through that, we're going to achieve in a short term and a long term, an increasement in the student interest and involvement and increasement in SGA legitimacy and presence on campus. And um, if you haven't had a chance, these amazing senators and role models had a, put their faith in me for this position. So in the draft, there are their recommendation letters they wrote for me. I extremely suggest that you read them if you have time. And um, because I don't want to take more time off the meeting, uh, we're not going to do the character witness presentation. But if you want to ask Senator Paulos anything uh, about my character, please feel free. He had a really good presentation, but we have a lot of things to do tonight. So it's very good to keep moving forward. Thank you very much. I'm up for, I'm up for, for, for. Thank you so much, Senator Ferro. Um, do we have any questions at this time? Seeing that we have none, we will now move into a period of voting. So if you and your character witness can please exit the room. Hi. 
Abby, that ballot is open. I just sent the link in the chat. Uh, let's get that printed by 10 over. Congratulations, now Chair Farrow of the Constituency Affairs Committee. <laughs> All right, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Victor Ferro. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of state your office. The duties of the office of Constituency Affairs Chair. For the Texas A&M University. For the Texas A&M University. Student Government Association. Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations now, Chair Farrow. Um, as we have now ended our chair elections, um, the speaker will now entertain a motion for a special presentation. And with that, we do have a motion from Chair Hine. Um, do you mind rising and sharing your motion? Chair Hine, congratulations. I move to deviate from the agenda in order to move into a special presentation period presented by Zach Hanshu. Do I see any seconds in the chat? Seeing multiple seconds, um, I move by general consent to deviate from the agenda for the special presentation. Do I see any objections? Seeing none, we will now move into a period. Seeing none, um, this uh, motion has been approved and we will now move by general consent and we will now move into a period of special presentation. And so we now have our guest. Zachary Hancho, and um, he should be able to share his presentation. And with that being said, you will have five minutes starting at Howdy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Zachary Hancho. I'm the product owner for Aggie Vote, which is a new Aggie Senate voting system which has been built for the past semester as part of my team. There are three other members on the team, and we have built this in conjunction with advice and counsel from Sam and Carrie and Timon as well. This is a pretty fleshed out system. And what I'm gonna to do today is present to you basically 
what it is, how it works, and then give you kind of a brief uh, questionnaire um, example. So Aggie Vote is a secure voting platform. It has easy voting and detects elections with live results, keyword and model. So when you submit right now, you're submitting on a CSV. There's a different, there's a different uh, Google form for each one. And then the actual operations has to hold those CSVs and then create PDFs, which are then uploaded. This is different. It's all in like one central database that you can go through everyone's votes. You can view their positions and you can make your own like uh, assumptions or whatever you need to know about a senator is in one database, everyone's senator. Now, this is all publicly available as well. So your constituents and someone like me, who's not a senator, can go and see what you voted for very easily. Voting process is simple. You go to the legislation page, you expand the ongoing legislation, you click vote. But it is secure, right? So there is a password field. When you try to vote, there is a specific password, just like right now when they send you a, a link for a form, there is a specific password for every single piece of legislation. This is automatically generated. To vote, you need that specific password, and then you can finally vote. Now, we have functionality because of the live view, because everyone's names are in that voting platform for admin to alter votes. That is because potentially someone malicious could come in and they could submit multiple votes. Or they could vote under your name. And you would be like, I didn't vote for that. So the admin can delete votes. But how do you make sure that admin is held accountable? To hold them accountable, every single action taken in the entire platform is law and it is not alterable. The admin cannot alter this. I cannot even go into the, the whole system and alter the law. So here you see all my test creates when I created tons of votes on the left side, right? So we're going to give some questions and we're going to have some demonstrations real quick. So what you see on the left side here is what an admin live view looks like. Right now, there's an open vote. It's a Senate presentation resolution. There are 11 votes for it. There's zero abstentions and there's two against. These are updated in real time on three second intervals. So when you submit a vote, it goes in, it updates, and you will see the live results. Now, on the right side, you will see just a regular person who's not signed in, who doesn't have an admin account. And they can go through and they can see how did a bill perform. This one, pretty much everyone voted against it. For bill three, against it, right? And then for this one, we have three votes for, one against. We do have 80 senators, right? But this is just like to show you how, the, um, how it distributes. And you can see it passed. On the home screen, there's some more analytics that you can look at. Total legislation passed, total votes processed. You can see the results of the majority of the legislation. And then you can go ahead and vote. Right here, we have a, a password prompt. This is where that admin will have needed to distribute the password. I already know it because I have it, right? And you can go in here and let's let's pick on Sam, I suppose. <laughs> where is he? All right, Sam abstains a lot. <laughs> you can see it updated live. And now let's, let's look at the accountability side of things. Let's say, you know, Sam's really adamant tonight, right? So Sam's going to go in. He's going to find his name again because he really wants to make sure he has stamps. Like, we're going to add another vote. Duplicate vote was found under Sam. Now, what do you want to do with this? We're going to go ahead as an admin. We're going to say, Sam, come on, man. Like, <laughs> two abstentions. <laughs> okay, but I deleted the vote. Some of you are like, well, you just deleted the vote, Zach. Where's the accountability in that? We can go to the logs. And again, this is the public side of things. And we can look at all the vote logs here. And we can see right here that I deleted Sam's vote. And he submitted not once but twice in a row. So there's full accountability. There's nothing I can do. I can't delete a log. I can't go in and change log at all. It is fully recorded and accountable on every single side. If you delete a bill, Zachary, at the time, um, your time has ended. So if you can please finish your sentence, that would be fantastic. Oh, we do have a motion in the chat. A motion from Senator Smith. You may rise. Senator Smith calls caucus. I move to extend the time of presentation by one minute. 
Um, do I see any seconds? Um, seeing one multiple seconds. Um, I do move by general consent to um, extend that time by one minute. Do I see any objections? Seeing none, we will move by general consent to extend that time by one additional minute. Um, and that minute will start when you continue speaking. You may continue. Anyways, the security is held through the entirety of the product. If you want to skip the code functionality to get through that authentication feature, there's also a unique QR code, which has that built in. Because the whole entire purpose of this is to ensure that you are in person, voting in person, and that the actual distribution of that entire voting system is done from the admin side. So we can confirm that you are a senator and you are indeed voting. So we have a unique QR code that you can use to vote if you would like at some point. Don't, you don't have to tonight, but basically you would scan this and then you would go ahead and you would vote. And that would get you through the entire system, right? But that's basically what we have for you today. I would like to go into questions if anyone has any. And so with that, this presentation is over and our presenter is open to questions. This is a five minute period of Q&A. And with that, Senator Farrow, you have been recognized. Chair. Chair. Chair Farrow. Chair Farrow. Yes. Thank you all. Um, chairs, please feel free to um, change your titles. <laughs> that sounds good to say. Um, I love the presentation. I just have one quick question. Is it possible to explore those that logged somehow? It is, yeah. So, we, we built in archiving functionalities and you can see this on the admin side. The reason you don't see it on the regular individual side is because they're restricted. So they don't have access to a senator log and they don't have access to the archiving because in the archiving, we don't want people to just be able to like, there, there's this issue right now where since it's a free application, the database at some point may get really big, right? And then we're gonna run out of room. So we have to find a way to make sure to download everything. And one of the big stipulations is that we delete the, the votes and the legislations, but we don't ever delete the logs. Okay. So the logs will always stay up there, but they are downloadable as well. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, with that, um, Senator Smith, you have been recognized. Permission to preface? Um, granted. Okay, I love this. Um, in, in past sessions, I think there's been a problem with senators when everything's in person pre COVID. Uh, some senators not paying attention, not voting, leaving the room, sometimes quorum wasn't able to make. So, uh, in that case, when everything's back to normal, we wouldn't need to select abstain. It would be a senator who is in the room present who did not vote. Would that be able to be changed at that time to represent that? So, you're talking about like an admin changing their vote? No, no, like the, the system changing when, when no one is virtual anymore mm -hmm. years down the road. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, so you're saying like if senators don't vote, you just log in and on an this expansion? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah if they're uh, present but not voting, then they would have to stay. Yeah, vote. so if it's not like an official log at the moment. If, if you don't vote, you just don't vote, right? And you're not in the, in the system. But if you want, like we can go through and just say like if senator doesn't vote automatically well, like in a stain, that's fine. The, the team the team is finishing up development so like this is part of the class in a way right so i will personally be working on the product through like the next few months maybe even through the summer if you have like some small adjustments like that but if you want some massive major feature i can't guarantee it completed in a timely manner because again like i can't tell my team to work on a class product you know when it's part of the class and then it's right so, thank you yeah of course um, with that, um, Chair Hernandez, you'll be recognized. Chair Hernandez, uh, Community Relations. So um, I'm under the impression that sometimes we live stream our meetings. And so I guess my question is, how will that password be dispersed so that like people who are on Facebook don't like log in as like me and try to yeah, vote on something? Yeah, so the password is up to the discussion of the app, right? So whoever on your side, you know, distributes that password, they can distribute it maybe via an email, maybe they can show it to you privately without the live stream, it would be up to them. But as long as you have like your own method of, distrib of distribution for that passcode, you can do it. There is one thing though, like you did mention how everything was live. That's the whole point of the live view is so that when you are in person, you can have like a, a kind of AT dashboard, like a you know, 2016 presidential election or anything. And you can see all the votes coming in live. But, but the distribution, they could write it on the paper and pass it around. 
it would be up to them. They could email it to you. Thanks for your work. Of course. Um, with that, um, Senator Alvarado, you're being recognized. Senator Alvarado, um, I'm just curious to know, like, people who are on my personal like, personal cards, but like, senator, it's not there. It's one, you know, I don't want to call the class of representatives to like any sort of personal, like, personal card, but like, you know, candidates and like, on the building and all that. So, like that. Yeah, so right now the voting page looks kind of like this. So you can have every single senator here, right? And you see how they're mixed in by resolution. There aren't a lot of votes right now because this is the, you know, an environment for testing. But you can sort by that senator, and you can see each piece of legislation that they may have voted on. So again, sorry guys, if like your names here and you're voting on random bills, like I just grabbed them from the voting record. On <laughs> so, I don't, I don't even know who makes you want, but, <laughs> but yeah, so you, you can see their voting record here by sorting because every every table in the database is, is fully sortable. So you can look at how their votes may have like, distributed over different types of bills, what those bills meant, you know, and that would be up to your discretion, right? I don't know what a resolution is. It's, it's not my prerogative, right? But if it is built into your, your legislation and you have a description, which they do, the legislation has descriptions to them all. Again, this is a sample piece of legislation. But you can go through and you can say they voted for this bill, and then that bill says this. Um. Senator Syed, um, you would be recognized, but time has ended for the Q&A session. So um, with that, um, I would like to thank Zachary for all the hard work he's done with his class for this project. Um, and I do know that, as he mentioned, in the coming weeks, he is opening to making more changes. And so a Google form will be sent out to all of you senators so that you can provide any additional feedback and you know, let him know what y'all's favorite features were. And I know he will share that as a QR code. So if anyone who has their phone, please do scan that QR code and provide your feedback so that we can have you know the best system possible implemented in this upcoming session. Um, and then if you do not get that, I'll make sure to email that out to all of you all later down the line. And so with that, thank you to our special presenter. And with that, we will now continue with the remainder of our agenda. Thank you so much. Fantastic. And so now we're going to move into a period of executive top staff confirmations. So the way, the way, these, the way these confirmations will work is um, SVP elect Natalie Parks will come to the floor. She will um, give a short introduction to the nominee, um, explain why she has chosen them. And then following that, each nominee will have a five minute presentation, um, five minute period to present followed by a five minute Q&A period, followed by voting. Um, so with that being said, um, SVP Natalie Parks, are you in the room with us today? Yes, I am. Um, you may now, as our first order of business, is the executive vice president. Um, if you want to come to the floor to um, you know, speak on your nominee. Um, and if that, um, Blake Leffingwell, who is being confirmed, um, do you mind if someone can make sure he's in the room? Um, yes, that he is. Wonderful. And Natalie, you may go ahead. Okay, my computer likes to do this. We'll just leave it here. Okay, howdy, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to give a brief introduction to all these candidates, like Ian just said, uh, before they get their bit. Obviously, they're going to be able to explain their credentials and qualifications a little bit more detail than I'm able to. But I just wanted to touch really quickly on when I was going through the cabinet application process, which ended last week, ended up being a lot more competitive than I imagined it would be, resulting in about 65 applicants who applied for multiple positions, basically bordering uh, kind of like 100 applications I had to sit through, which is super fun. Um, I knew that the people that I was searching for had to be extremely passionate, hardworking, and servant leadership minded individuals. So, with that, I'm blessed to be able to present a handful of these incredible people to y'all this evening, beginning with my nominee for executive vice president. Our first candidate of the night is an absolute stand up guy who has proved his dedication to our university by serving in multiple, multiple capacities throughout his time on campus. From the Corps of Cadets, 
To the MSC, to Coles Council, this candidate has an exceptional record of involvement and excellence, as y'all will see soon. I'm telling y'all right now that he's going to be the glue that holds our team together this year. And not only do I foresee a fruitful friendship with this individual, but I know that his relational leader oriented outlook on life will do so much for this community government association in the year ahead. As such, it is my absolute honor to be able to nominate the one and only Blake Leffingwell for executive vice president. So I'm um, Howdy Blake, before you begin, I do need to give an announcement to the Senate room. So normally our Senate meetings do end at 1030 um, and we usually get kicked out of coldest, but you know, thankful to our gracious advisors and to Stuak, they have granted us that extension to midnight. Um, with that being said, I know no one wants to be here until midnight, but um, with that being said, we still have five confirmations to get through. So I encourage you all to be as quick and as efficient as possible so we can get through all of these confirmations and end our meeting hopefully before midnight but making the most of the extension we were given um so with that being said um blake the floor is all yours the moment you say howdy your five minute presentation period will begin thank you man howdy senate howdy. Howdy. as natalie said i don't know if i'm gonna follow her up but my name is blake leffingwell and i'm at your mercy to be appointed as the executive vice president for sga first thing about me um that is me with some of my foster kittens, which is one of my fun facts. Um, I am from Round Rock, Texas. Um, my major is agricultural economics, and I have a focus in finance and real estate. I'm also in the sales minor, and I'm getting a certificate in leadership from the Core Hollingsworth Center in May. Um, along with the foster kitten deal, uh, I have rated 400 plus movies on IMG. I had way too much time during quarantine, so that is proof of that. Um, moving on to my experience, there's me and a Senator Carlin there, um, but my student organizations that I've been involved in throughout my time here, the Corps of Cadets, um, I've been involved in Company P2 as well as First Sergeant Staff. I was the Director of Delegates and External Marketing in MSC Scona, and this year I did start as a member of the Leadership Committee in Coles Council. Um, my work experience. Uh, throughout my time here in college, I've had an apprenticeship at R Bank Texas, which is a local bank out of my hometown, Round Rock, and I help commercial lenders structure lending deals for customers. And I'm also involved here in residence life, and right now I'm with the core housing office. Um, here's a picture of me with all of my freshmen uh, while all of y'all were freezing in your homes during this ice apocalypse earlier this semester. We were having a fun snowball fight. This is me, y'all may recognize uh, our chief of staff, Zach Griffin, and our LR chair, Cedric Matley. We are all in MSC Stone together. And then a bit above, uh, that was me and my friends earlier in February during the MSC Stone banquet. Moving on, what can I do for y'all? Um, something I really talked about in my interview, uh, I really value respect, and that's something I want to lead with. I don't believe SGA is something that is a top-down type deal from exec at top going down to all the other students. I see it as sort of a ripple of water where I lead with respect and it goes outward to everybody else as I see all of us on the lateral plane of leadership. Um, my vision, um, I'm gonna really help Natalie with her platform. Um, I'm gonna be really big on wellness and outreach. I wanna see a well-running exec cabinet. And a big thing about me is I always wanna lead places I'm in a better place than I found it. And given that SGA is the premier leadership organization of a and I want to leave a and better uh, than when I found it. My goals, I want to be working with Chair Mosley to spend every last penny of our $50,000 because I know other schools are rocking with six digits for their budgets and I want to get us up there for sure. Um, especially with the tradition portion of Natalie's platform, one thing I really want to do is I want to lower the cost of sports passes so that way we can get Kyle fuel filled up even faster this fall. Also, I will be wanting to reach out to any organization that's willing to work with SGA. I want to have a lot more synergy. Um, and then that would mean participating in cookies and coffee style events or going to other things with Natalie. Um, and just being able to support her, taking pressure off her shoulders, I believe that's what a good EDP should do. Um, just to leave off, I want to be you know, short and sweet. 
I want campus to be a, a better place for new Aggies like my little sister who just got accepted to AM in this class of 2025. That's all I have. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Blake, for your presentation. We are now going, going into a five minute period of Q&A. So if anyone has questions for Blake, please raise your hands now. Um, Senator Harlan, you've been recognized. Senator Harlan, Off Campus Caucus. Mr. Leffingwell, you have rated 400 plus movies on IMDb. Which is your favorite movie to watch and why? So, tough question, Senator Harlan. Um, I have about 22 movies that I've given a 10 out of 10. Um, but earlier today, I watched Blade Runner with my girlfriend. So, I will say that it's one of my favorite science fiction movies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will now recognize Senator Hine. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, permission to practice? Um, permission is granted. Awesome. I think you have a lot of good ideas in theory, but can you recite what the executive and vice president responsibilities are? Yes, of course. So it is my job to support SVP Parks and any of her initiatives. I'm also the VP of Finance. I believe that my experience in commercial banking would be able to help out with that and overseeing the cabinet along with hopefully Noble, who, who is our hopeful chief of staff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, we will now recognize um, Senator Oldag. Um, Senator Oldag, College of Academic Sciences, given your close relationship with the SVP and also the fact that you're very close friends with her boyfriend, would you say that this is a conflict of interest, possibly? First of all, I want to say that it's a very red ass last name. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, I don't believe that it's conflict of interest, as Natalie said. Um, it was a very, very competitive um, application process, and I have full faith that she selected the right person. So, thank you. Um, with that, um, are there any more questions in these last few minutes of debate um, in Q&A? Seeing that there are no more questions, we will um, Senator Blake, you may now take your, I'm uh, not Senator, um, Blake, you may now take your seat. We will now enter a period of debate in which senators can come forward and debate, and we will begin by a debate against. Um, so if any senators would like to come up and debate against the candidate, now is the time. Um, we do have a point of information. Please rise, Senator Smith. Madam uh, Speaker, I was wondering, in the past, haven't the candidate as well as the student by president who nominated left the room for the period of debate? Um, I think you are correct, um, and I was just contacted about that. So yes, um, if SBB Parks and um, nominee um, Blake Leffingwell can exit the room before that debate process begins, I do apologize for that oversight on my part. Um, I am also being informed that SBU Parks can actually remain in the room. It is just the candidate who has to be. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, once he has exited the room, we will enter that period of debate and it will be as usual where we have those three rounds unless debate becomes one-sided. And so right now at the moment, is there any debate against the candidate? If, not, if so, please raise your hand. We do have an additional point of information from Senator Smith. Uh, speaker, I'm sorry, I, I might have missed something. Is the person, uh, the, the SVP who made the nomination not supposed to leave the room for the period they of debate? They stay. They, they stay in, okay. Yes. I'm sorry, I was talking. I shouldn't have been talking. But... Yes. I initially thought she was supposed to leave, and then I was also told and corrected that the SVP actually does get to stay in the room. Thank you. So with that being said, we will now move into our period of debate at this time. Are, is there anyone debate against the candidate or nominee? Seeing none, we will now move into a period of debate for the candidate. 
Um, we do have a hand raise. Senator Thompson, you may go ahead. Uh, Senator Thompson, Corps of Cadets. I've had the opportunity to get to know Blake Leffing well um, through a variety of experiences over the last semester. I met him doing uh, the Student Conference on National Affairs. He is an incredibly stand-up guy, uh, has all sorts of leadership. This is the best we could possibly ask for. I strongly urge you to uh, push through, to vote in favor of Blake Leffingwell. Thank you. With that, um, Senator Graham, Senator Wolf, I apologize. Senator Wolf, the Lawrence Caucus. I've had the unique privilege of living on the same floor as Mr. Leffingwell, and I am for personal friends with a lot of the freshmen he was talking about uh, coming through the freshman year before cadets. He was always someone that you definitely could rely on for information that you needed. Lots of applications, especially with housing, can be kind of confusing because it's not really an actual housing offer. It's a run a lot by cadets. And so having him there was really helpful. He was always a lovely face. And you will not find someone with organizational, organizational skills nor the caring personality to continue to stop. Thank you, Senator Wolf. Do you yield your time to the floor or to any other senator? I yield time to the floor, man. Thank you. Um, we are now entering a debate period against. Um, is there anyone that would like to debate against at this time? Seeing that there are none, we will now move into a debate period for the candidate. Um, is there any additional debate for the candidate? Seeing that there is none, we'll go into that final round of debate against. And seeing that is none, um, we can say that debate is one-sided and that, and that means that the debate period is now over and we will now go into a period of voting led by pro tem for Marvin. Hi, I have sent the link to that ballot, it is open. Let's get these written by 10 30 Howdy, voting pass closed. And with a vote of four to fifty four in favor, three against, and one in abstention, Mr. Lessingwell has been confirmed. Congratulations to our new EVP. If he may come to the floor to be sworn in. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Blake Leffingwell. 
Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of executive vice president. The duties of the office of executive vice president. For the Texas A&M University. For the Texas A&M University. Student Government Association. Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. Congratulations, Blake, for being elect, for being chosen and confirmed as our new executive vice president. Um, we will now move into a confirmation of the executive top staff, chief of staff. So if SVP Parks can come down to the floor and provide that short introduction again for her chief of staff. Again, our next nominee is up for chief of staff. Y'all, I just want to say that he has already one up me in the sense that he has actually already served as a student body president of another college. So take that as you will. His multifaceted understanding of how a team works and functions effectively will help this year's cabinet grow close in friendship, but also prepare them professionally and effectively for the year ahead. Not only will he help to, to keep me grounded this year, but he will work with absolute parties to make sure that cabinet runs like a well-oiled machine. He has a desire to do the absolute most wherever he serves and is able to connect well with everybody that he communicates with. I am beyond confident in his, I am beyond confident in his abilities, and I know that y'all will be too. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce Noble Ugo to y'all this evening. Thank you for your kind words, uh, Simon Professor Parks. Uh, my name is Nobu Udo, and uh, I'm here as a nominee for the Chief of Staff. So I'm an international student from Nigeria, and my hometown is Mio, which is a city in Nigeria. Uh, currently a junior biology major. And the fun fact about me is that I occasionally break down. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't ask me to, because uh, I'm kind of rusty, but anyway, so. Why chief of staff? Uh, Senior body president Parks had already mentioned. Um, you know, chief of staff. You know, some of the duties of chief of staff are uh, things that I've already done as student body president at Austin Community College from 2019 to 2020. And in that position, you know, I managed an executive cabinet of eight members, as well as an organization of 46 members to achieve set goals. So one of the goals that we worked on, one of the things we worked on was. Uh, and helping to establish the first comprehensive health center at ACC. You know, we have a dental clinic, you know, but we didn't really have like uh, something that, you know, uh, like the student health services that we have here at Kenya. So, you know, I also work with family student health services and communication back and forth with the team, um, as well as, you know, student health services at other institutions. And this is a project that is still in continuation by the current SD administration at Austin Community College. So, you know, while at Austin Community College, we also work to increase organization membership by 50%. And uh, we also work to increase organization involvement across all 11 campuses. And we did this by working with the student life team to inform uh, students about like SGA, but also to encourage them, you know, to participate in the activities that we have going on. Uh, we also work to provide monthly volunteers for the Central Texas Food Bank monthly distribution. And you know, with my experience as student body president at another like institution, I feel like I have the experience working with people, not just like working with people, but also working on multiple projects across 11 campuses. And I believe that this is a good skill for a chief of staff to have. And this is just you know a picture of like me and my team. Uh, we're just having conversations and kind of like getting to know one another. And uh, it's just more like a team building activity, which is also one of the uh, responsibilities of people's staff. And uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to make you guys hungry, but <laughs> uh, okay, so this is you know another meeting session that we had. Um, just a swearing session. So I kind of like giving you guys like you know why I'm the best. I told you guys like why I'm the best uh, candidate for the chief of staff position, but like 
what will I do in the role of chief of staff? And how will I operate? Like, what are the things that will drive me? And uh, those things are my values, my vision, and my goals. So the top value that you know I live by is effectiveness. Or you could say excellence, which is one of the uh, uh, values that we, we live by as artists. And this is just you know making sure that everything that I do, um, I do it to the best of my ability. And the people working around me as well, you know, enabling them to also function in you know, their best in whatever they, they choose to do. Um, also, my vision, you know, I, I hope to work with cabinet members to help them achieve their goals, as I mentioned, you know, helping people work to uh, the best of their ability, but also be more effective in whatever they do. And I also hope to uh, support SBP, the current SBP vision to foster wellness, inclusion, as well as promote tradition. And some of my goals are like, you know, helping the SBP with goal setting to create a time by me, which is something that I know. Um, you know, she's really interested in, and we should all be interested in as artists, helping make sure that the decisions that we make here at a and are actually like informed by student opinion. Um, but also, you know, I want to create an environment for people to function, as I said before, in their strengths, but also compensate for their weaknesses. And one of the ways that I plan to do this is by, you know, working to see that, you know, the team takes this assessment test, it's called the six working geniuses, and uh, it, it was developed by Patrick Lencioni, who's an author with expertise in team management. So some of like the, the, the items on the six working geniuses um, assessment test is like wonder, invention, discernment, galvanizing, enablement, and tenacity. So these are all things that you know, some people may be strong in and other people may be weak in. Maybe like, let's say someone is strong in you know, being a wonder that's coming up with like new ideas. Someone else may be weak in that area, but two of them can work together, you know, just kind of like uh, compensate for the other person's weakness. And that's that's one of the things that I plan to do as chief of staff. So with like my skills, experience, values, uh, my vision, as well as my goals, I believe I will serve well in the chief of staff role to accomplish the SVP's vision, uh, but also to achieve the organization's mission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Udo, just on time because your time has just ended. And um, we are now opening up the floor for a question and answer. We have a five minute period for a Q&A. So if anyone has questions, please raise your hand. Senator Harlan. Senator Harlan off campus caucus. Mr. Udo, you mentioned one of your previous goals at Austin Community College was to increase involvement by 50%. Did you achieve this goal? Uh, so that wasn't actually a goal, that was something we actually accomplished. Um, so that was uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, things that I'm very proud of because when I joined the organization initially, not many students knew about like SDA and not many students held uh, positions within the, the organization. So our goal was to, you know, basically do like outreach more aggressively. Um, to ensure that more people will fill the positions that we have and as such like better represent students across all the learning campuses. We could use that. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have any other questions for Mr. Udo? Um, Senator Gus Rodriguez. Senator Rodriguez, Engineering Caucus. So what were the exact actions you did to increase involvement in Austin Community College's SBA? Well, thank you very much, Senator Rodriguez, for that question. Uh, so the main thing we did was, as soon as you know, I got elected, and I had my cabinet you know, with me, um, what we did was we came up with a plan to basically like reach out to students on all 11 campuses through uh, the Riverbank Bash. Um, and the Riverbank Bash is basically like how do we um, but it's like, you know, we have uh, booths set up like on all 11 campuses, right? Just to introduce students to some of the resources that we had. So our goal was to make sure that we had someone at every single Riverbank Bash, you know, reaching out to students, um, especially like freshmen, you know, because they, they, they want to know more about the school and how they could get involved. So it was like basically making sure that, you know, we were at all, you know, Riverbank Bashes and, um, we're also like giving out our contact information. So I think that those are the two main things that we that we did to increase that involvement. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. 
With that being said, do we have any more questions for our presenter? Seeing none, thank you so much, Mr. Udo. We will have you exit the room so that we can enter our period of debate. Thank you so much. Now that he has exited the room, we are now moving into a period of debate, beginning with debate against. Do we have any debate against? Seeing none, is there any debate for? Going back to the next round, is there any debate against? Seeing that there is no debate, um, the debate period will be concluded and we will now enter a period of voting led by Pro Tem Poor Marvit. Okay, that, that ballot is open. I just sent the link. Let's get those in by 1051. Voting has closed and with a unanimous vote of 59 in favor, now it's been confirmed. Congratulations, Noble. You are now the new chief of staff for SVP Elect Parks, and you will now be sworn in. Raise your right hand your feet after me. I state your name. I, Noble Udo, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, to faithfully execute to the best of my ability, to faithfully execute to the best of my ability, the duties of the office of chief of staff, the duties of the office of chief of staff, for the Texas a and University, for the Texas a and University, Student Government Association, Student Government Association, to uphold the honor of the same, to uphold the honor of the same, of the same, of the same. At all times to protect the welfare. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. Of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. Congratulations, Noble, on your confirmation. Um, with that, we're now going to move into a period of the exec Executive Vice President of Operations is confirmation, Mamie Hurdle. So if Natalie Parks can come down back down to the floor to provide that background information and get that confirmation started. So 
So this next candidate absolutely blew me away with her credentials, in addition to her ability to lead quietly in volume, but loud in value, which I know she's going to explain to you here in a moment. From a personal standpoint, I see a lot of qualities in this individual that I possess myself. She is a multi-talented candidate that is a quick learner and has a passion for service. I am inspired by her, and I've literally only known her for about two weeks now. This candidate is capable of forging the strong relationships needed to succeed as the EVP of operations, and I look forward to seeing what she accomplishes in her time at Texas A&M. Please give a warm welcome to Mamie Bertle. I'm originally from Moore, Montana, so a little bit away from here. It's a lot warmer here than at home right now, which I'm very happy about. I'm a transfer student from Montana State, so this is my very first semester here at AM. So I'm technically a sophomore, but kind of here the public transfer credits. Uh, I'm majoring in agricultural communications and journalism with a minor in sociology, the angle of going to law school. Uh, some fun facts about me is last year at Fort Connecticut, I got to go to Japan and I ate that weird squid in that picture down there. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, and I also have a blog, moresquidall.com. Um, so some of my experience, uh, one that I want to touch on the most with this last year, I took a year off to serve as the 2019-2020 National FSA Special Region Vice President. Um, I've heard FFA pops around the room a little bit in previous presentations. So basically, um, it's the largest student led organization in the country, and I was one of six chosen to lead that 750,000 people. Um, and so I got to travel a little bit, but mainly it was online due to it to the COVID um, and everything that happened with that. Um, I'm also on the National FFA Alumni Advisory Committee representative. So of the six, I was chosen as the 101 to be on the alumni board. I was one in a state for a job cap, which was put me on a nonprofit in the local community um, to give addicts a place to recover. Um, I also was my sorority's vice president of finance, Montana's state secretary, and when I was a senior in high school, I got to go to Girls Nation, which gave me a lot of government background, um, and I was one of two from Montana to go to that. Um, currently, I'm a Texas 4-H uh, student technician. Um, I'm going to be in agricultural and natural resources policy summer 21 cohort, so I'll get a lot of policy um, experience this summer, which I know will be really helpful in my role as executive vice president of operations. Um, some volunteer work that have been really impactful for me was I was part of the Central Monthly Mentoring Program, teacher's assistant, and I also coordinated a little bit of basketball program when I was a senior in high school, which was super fun. Um, this year, I really want to lead with my values of consistency, dependability, and curiosity. I like to be consistent in my relationships, my communications, and just everything that I do, I want to be consistent with others and people around me. Um, as Natalie mentioned, I like to lead in a way that is quiet and volume, but loud and value. Um, I don't like public speaking, even though I was a national officer last year. I'm much more introverted, and I like to work in the background and make sure that others are able to succeed in the best way possible. And that's why I think I'm uniquely fitted to serve as executive vice president of operations, being able to foster those relationships with committee chairs and make sure that they're, they're succeeding in their roles as leaders. Um, I want to start with the foundation of inclusion and in everything that I do and to support SVP Parks and all of our initiatives this year. I'm all in on everything that she wants to do for our campus, and I want to serve our campus in the ways that she wants to do. Um, I really want to deliver leadership tools to those committee chairs so they can succeed, as I mentioned. I'm um, providing them with a constant communication, an ear to listen, um, and just anything that I can do for them. I'm a primary liaison between them um, and the executive branch, and so I just want to be able to give them anything that they would need from me. Um, I really want to continue facilitating essential conversations with those chairs and making sure that we turn a moment into a movement, something that I like to say, and just making sure that we are constantly having those harder conversations to move us forward and continue making an impact on campus. And that's pretty much all I have. Thanks. Um, with that, she has completed her period of presentation. Um, and is open to questions. So are there any questions for the presenter? Um, we do have a hand raised, um, Senator Olag. Uh, Senator Olag, College of Academic Sciences. Um, shout out, little preface, permission to preface. <laughs> <laughs> you do have the permission to preface. Cool, right? all I was gonna say was shout out, okay, but I didn't wanna take a lot of work. <laughs> Something tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really interested in the fact that you're class of 24 because 
that's really exciting. Can you speak a little bit to your knowledge of A and M, SGA? You obviously have a lot of other like leadership experiences, but just specifically um, goals and ideas and experiences regarding like SGA, Texas A and M student body constituents, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I am class of twenty four, like I said, but sophomore ish, um, credit wise. And this is my first semester here at AM, but I've been involved in student government in high school. And I've also taken a big interest in SBP Park's vision. And that's kind of why I put myself out there to be in this, because I really care about what she wants to do in her platform of wellness, inclusion, and tradition. Um, so even though I don't have every single bit of SGA experience under my belt, I know that I have the leadership experience to make it happen. And I've already got all the committees memorized and figured that part out. And I have no doubt that I'll be able to immerse myself and do the best that I can for this position. Thank you. Uh, Chair Jeffries. Chair Jeffries, I can look there. Is. Um, so what tools do you think that you could develop to help our community succeed in the future? Yeah. So I mentioned that one of the ways that I think that leaders are able to thrive is being able to have a vulnerable conversation and be able to provide the committee chairs with the space to have those conversations with each other. Um, I've gotten the chance to speak with the, my predecessor, I guess that would be, I don't know if that's the right word there. Um, and she said that one of the things that committee chairs wanted most was just a place to be able to talk about their struggles and what they needed from um, executive cabinet, but also just from the other chairs in the community of AM. And so I think I can facilitate those conversations in a way that people feel safe and comfortable and included um, to be able to get their airs out and also find ways to answer. Um, with that, Senator Mangalal, Mangalalia, Mangalan, I apologize. Okay. Thank you, Speaker Ahmed. Uh, Speaker Ahmed, requesting permission to preface. Um, that permission is granted. Thank you so much for your time, Ms. Hertel. For, for your past leadership experience, you shared that you were a national FFA Central Region Vice President. As someone who was also in district regional leadership, I also know the great difficulty in coordinating different uh, committees and chairs together across huge distances with vast arrays of people from different cultures. So regarding your goal for creating a foundation of inclusion, how do you plan on applying your FFA regional leadership experience and skills towards fostering inclusion and constant communication to support all SGA committees and committee members across all walks of life? Yeah, absolutely. So having a membership of 750,000 people across all 50 states in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, I had pretty unique opportunities to meet people from all walks of life. One thing I want to touch the most on though is we had the very first ever national FFA convention held virtually with over 250,000 participants in that. And we started from the ground up um, creating that. In previous years, we would go off of scripts from decades before with national officers. We started with a blank Google Doc. Um, and so when we started thinking about how could we make this the best for students and meet them where they were at the times and having it on a virtual platform, which wasn't ideal by any means, but we knew that we had to make the most of it, we started with inclusion. And I think that's what we did in every single thing that we did that year, because we knew that we could meet students uniquely instead of having to meet them in person. We can meet them on a virtual platform and provide it to students that might not have been able to come to national convention like they could before. That's just one example, but I could go on forever about how I got a really good experience in being able to just know what others need and be able to ask the questions to make sure they can express their needs. Because a lot of times people don't feel comfortable expressing how they need to be included. And so I think I'm really good with my curiosity, strength, and value of being able to ask those questions to make people feel comfortable and included. Thank you so much. Do we have any other questions for the presenter? Seeing none, um, that period of Q&A will end. Um, thank you so much, Mamie. Um, if you can exit the room and we will move into that period of debate. Thank you. And now Senate, we are now moving into that period of debate. Is there any debate against the appointee? Seeing none, is there any debate for the appointee? If so, please raise your hands. Seeing that there is no debate, the debate period will now be concluded and we will move into a period of voting led by Speaker Pro Tempore Marvit. Howdy, that ballot is open. I'm just the link. Let's get that done by 11 
money to those people that are trying to get out of the city. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, Congratulations, Mamie, and you will now be sworn in. All right, raise your right hand or repeat after me. I state your name. I, Mamie Earl. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of, state your office name. The duties of the office of Executive Vice President of Operations. For the Texas a and University Student Government Association. For the Texas a and Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To so uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations once again, Mamie, for being confirmed as Executive Vice President of Operations. We will now move into a period of additional Executive Cabinet confirmations, beginning with the Vice President of Communication, Peyton Liebler. And so if um, he will be virtual, but if SVP elect can come to the floor to share a little bit more about him before he presents. Yes, ma'am. To know him is to love him and to also absolutely be blown away by the sheer amount of talent and leadership experience that this man possesses. The next candidate is up for VP of Com, like she mentioned, and that position has a special place in my heart because I served in that capacity last year, where I was actually able to meet Peyton and grow with him as we worked to communicate the goals and messages of student government to the student body. The second that he took over the role after me this past summer, I literally said to myself, well, dang, it's day one, and he's already done like a thousand times better than me. So that being said, this individual is one of my absolute closest confidants and one of my life role models. He's also the absolute most qualified person to take on the role of VP Com for another round. Everyone, please welcome Peyton Liebler. Peyton, you may now present for a period of five minutes. Just gonna share my screen here, sorry. Okay. Trying to find the present button. Oh, here we go. All right. Howdy everybody, my name is Peyton um, and I am absolutely ecstatic to be up for the nomination of the Vice President of Communications for the SGA Executive Cabinet. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a class of 22, AAA whoop, um, recreation parks and tourism sciences major um, from Coles, uh, hometown San Antonio, Texas. Um, and I'm specializing in getting certified within the realms of event planning, tourism management, and hospitality management as well. Um, a fun fact about me, I have a 17 year old cat and she is literally my favorite living thing on the planet earth. So that's her right over there. Um, just a fun little video if you guys want to see it, uh, but I will play that later for y'all. Um, let's see here. Okay, experience. Um, so I actually started my SGA journey as a fish aid in 2018, um, where I served on the University Event Programming Cabinet Committee, um, planning events such as the SGA Awards Banquet, SGA Tailgate, and under SVP Amy Sharp's uh, Class of 19 <laughs> health events. Um, I also served 
as Natalie Effer mentioned, um, as the FBA communications head of content creation um, during my sophomore year, where I got to work um, in the special field of graphics creation and content creation overall. And I currently serve as the SGA vice president of communications um, under SVP Eric Mendoza, um, which has been the biggest blessing of my life of just getting to serve in every role capacity towards every committee in SGA um, on all of my efforts that I get to uh, work under um, in content creation, as well as social media efforts and public engagement. Um, I also have worked for the Texas A&M Athletics and the Letterman's Association, Association um, under a student organization called Team 12, which I'm currently still a part of um, in student event management and service organization dedicated to the execution of Aggie football games, athletic recruiting events, and Letterman's Association gatherings. I also was a director for the MSC Abbott Family Leadership Conference this year as the director of administration, and that's a conference specializing in selfless service, ethics, values, and leadership development for the students of Texas A&M. And um, under the uh, Division of Student Affairs, I am the Art Commemoration Chair of the Matthew Gaines Society, um, and I'm still currently part of the Matthew Gaines Society. So I got to be one of the student leaders responsible for statue artist selection and statue completion process. And I'm currently working on the unveiling event coming fall of 2021, so super excited with that. And um, it's just gonna be really excited. Hope, hope you guys can come and see it. Um, the, uh, my relevant work experience I uh, was an intern for Live Nation Entertainment, where I got to work with social media specifically, as well as event management. And I also was offered an internship by the Walt Disney Company for membership and programming, but it was canceled due to COVID-19. But I would have also gotten to work under social media marketing and brand management. And I volunteer um, with the City of College Station Parks and Recreation Departments for Community Center and City Park Maintenance, um, which has been the most fun, as well as um, uh, in the Cornerstone Early Childhood Development um, Program uh, as an operative child care provider. Um, so that's been the most fun experience. Um, values. Um, so you guys can read a little bit about my values uh, here. Um, imagination, creativity, revolution, hope, people, and belief. And my vision for the VP of Communications is this, this position has become sort of a home of sorts for me for a multitude of reasons. And the reason I would like to serve again this year is because I still believe I have so much left to give to SGA and the constituents that are a part of it. And I think the VP of Communications should bring SGA into a new light at Texas A&M by focusing on the evaluation of our campus and our student body as a living, breathing thing. And this includes the distinct focus of the immensely diverse ecosystem of SGA. And this comprising of three branches, each with their own unique, vibrant communities and committees. And my vision focuses on the things that make SGA unique and therefore share that with the campus in um, wholly unique ways. Um, and this will be accomplished through acute inner organizational communication, as well as the promotion of an open dialogue for all students to showcase the amazing things that SGA does for this university and for our lives. And we can accomplish this through the use of emerging technology, engaging experience, and direct student communication. Sorry. All right. So one of my biggest goals is social media. So increase the following of all social media accounts. Pretty self-explanatory. Got to do that a lot this year. So kind of keep going up with it. Um, as well as create some SGA experiences, so tiny developments we can share on social media as a part of becoming student life effort, or as, as becoming part of student life efforts. Um, and this can be anything from giveaways to little promotions that showcase how much SGA cares about students and serving them. Um, and then physical promotion, so providing digital promotions using on-campus monitors, and this will greatly establish our presence at Texas A&M. And then on-campus engagement. So one of these being the remote engagement venue, which would be a place where we can actually table anywhere and make creative experiences that kind of pop up all over the place. Sorry to interrupt you, Peyton, but you are out of time. So at this time, um, we will have to end our period of presentation. No worries. Um, but we will enter a period of Q&A. So if anybody would like to ask you any questions, um, you can then answer any questions they may have. Um, do we have any questions? Please raise your hand in the chat. Well, seeing that there are none, we are going to move to a period of debate that will require us to kick you out into the waiting room. Um, so once that is done, he has been sent out to the waiting room. We will now enter our period of debate. Is there any debate against the appointee? Seeing none, is there any debate for the appointee? Seeing none, 
seeing that there has been no debate, the period of debate will be concluded. Um, and with that, we'll move into a period of voting led by Speaker Pro Tem for Marbit. Senate, that ballot is open. It is currently on 14. Let's get that turned in by 11. Voting has closed on the unanimous decision of 60 in favor. Tate and Weebler have been confirmed. Congratulations, Peyton. You have just been confirmed for the Vice President of Communications, and you will now be sworn in. All right, Peyton, can you hear me? Yes. All right, raise your hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Peyton Liebler. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of, state the your office name. The duties of the office of the Vice President of Communications. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. And to promote good relations. And to promote good relations. Between the students. Between the students. And those concerned with the university. And those concerned with the university. Congratulations. Congratulations, Peyton. And from there, we will now move into the confirmation for the executive president of Tradition Enrichment, Mike Rivera. Um, I do think he is in coldest with us, correct? Um, and if Natalie Parks can come to the floor to introduce her last minty. Okay, y'all, we are almost through the night. Our next candidate of the night uh, and myself, we met over the summer when I DM'd him on Facebook to have an intentional discussion about traditions at Texas A&M. We scheduled a Zoom call and immediately clicked. Five minutes into our first initial two plus hour chat, I knew that he was going to accomplish so much in the role of Vice President of Tradition Enrichment. I admire this individual's ability to take an idea and run with it further than anybody I've literally ever met in my life. He is qualified, capable, and possesses more energy for pursuing positive tradition-based projects and, initi and initiatives on campus than anybody I know. He is my right-hand man and contains a fire for Texas A&M that is rare to come by. It is my pleasure to nominate Mike Rivera for another go at the VP of Tradition and Richmond. Mike Rivera, you do have a period of five minutes for a presentation starting at Howdy. Oh, howdy, son. Howdy. 
it's good to see the second fourth back where they should be. Um, this is really awesome. I, I got to see all earlier in the MSC, but it didn't feel right. Um, let's see, am I controlling this? No. Yeah, there you go. Um, my name is Michael Vera, I'm from Texas Study Class of 22. Uh, I'm from Burnett, Texas, majoring in biology and minoring in psych. Uh, fun fact, all I can really think of is I want to be a United States Navy flight surgeon one day. Uh, that's not really fun, but it's kind of cool. Uh, experience, I've done about a million and one things here at Texas A&M, but regarding tradition, I've been a member of Traditions Council for two years now. Um, I can honestly say those have been some of the most rewarding experiences that I've ever had in my life. Uh, you know, getting to stand with the families who, who just lost someone and be the face of Texas A&M. Uh, it, it's really, uh, it's just a very, very emotional position and it, it is an honor. Uh, I'm currently serving as the SBBP position right now under President Mendoza's cabinet. Uh, we have done many, many projects this year. Uh, some of these you haven't seen yet, but they're in the works and they should be getting back here pretty soon. Uh, just to kind of point it to you out, the Trad Center is our baby. We funded about $17,000. Uh, the 73rd session was, in the first time I can recall, gave us more money than what I asked for in allocations for this project. Uh, so that was really cool. But we are fully funded, and we are just getting final approvals to go on that. Uh, howdy is another thing that's very important at Texas A&M. So we are trying to bring back the word howdy. Uh, right there in the bottom left, you can see some road paint. Uh, we want to put howdy somewhere on this campus on a road. That is something that is in progress with Dr. T's office. Uh, and as well as some howdy signs there on the right. So just a few things that we're trying to do to put things in the face of students so that way we get more involved with our traditions. Uh, up in the top right hand corner, some of you, if you live on campus, you've seen that in the morning uh, of Tuesdays when we do have silver taps. That is a notification basically to close windows and avoid light emission. So that's just a small example of things that we've done with Res Life. We've built a wonderful partnership with them this year. Uh, we are actually working into resident advisors uh, programming. So again, if you've ever lived on campus, you've gone through an RA program. We have provided them with programs that they can run through. So again, putting accurate information in the hands of ResLife staff. Oh, can't forget Hullabaloo U collaboration. 97% of freshmen are exposed to Hullabaloo U every year. Starting now, not always. Some of us that are old didn't get that. Um, but they reached out to us and said we want a tradition curriculum in our program. So uh, with the help of Paul Murphy from Hullabaloo U, we are currently working that into their program for next year. Values, integrity, and fearlessness. If you're doing this position for anything in SGA and you don't have the integrity for the right reasons, you're not in the right place. We do this for everybody else and not for ourselves. Okay. And that's just something for everybody. Fearlessness. I can't tell you how many times in this role this year I've been told that's an absurd idea. <laughs> and, and no one is going to want to do that. You have to be able to pick up the slack when people say things like that and keep carrying on. And that is something that I will do for you. Um, I envision this cabinet, you know, the little bit that I've met in there, absolutely incredible. And I've appreciated y'all so much, Natalie. Your, your leadership has found that outstanding. But I envision us listening more to the student body. I know that's our whole purpose, but I know we don't always do it too well. And I think with Vice President Leaveland that you guys just got in, uh, that's definitely going to be a possibility for the future. Goals. Under SVP Mendoza, we have built a wonderful foundation for tradition. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much progress we've made towards enriching traditions here at Texas a in the past year. We have set a precedent for working together, whether it be traditions council, muster, class councils, big event, whatever it is. Tomorrow, I'm going to have every single leader from all those groups sitting in this room, and they're going to be talking to each other about important issues. Those are the kind of things that we need to be doing, and they're happening now, and that's something that we've been able to accomplish. Understanding what we can do to increase accessibility. This is a gigantic student body, and we are incredibly diverse. We have to understand why not everyone feels included or like they have the ability to participate in our traditions. We have to maintain what they are, but we have to evolve in how we reach out to them. That is another big issue that we have, and that's something that we have worked well with. Now is the time to do this, ladies and gentlemen. You do have a few more seconds left, so if you can finish your sentence 
as your presentation will end. Now is the time to do this. Our freshman class did not get to experience things how we did. And so this is a very, very important issue that we have to maintain steam. Thank you all so much. With that, the floor is open for questions. If we have any questions, please raise your hand in the Zoom chat. Um, we do have one question, Senator Manglalan. Thank you, Speaker Ahmed. Clarence Mullen, all Catholic Senator. Mr. Rivera, going into your second year as Vice President for Transition and Richmond, it's important to reflect on past, the past term to strengthen things that went well. Without a doubt, in SGA, you have a remarkable reputation that precedes you for being very, very aggressive with meeting every tradition project timeline and deadline. Could you please share with the Senate why you why this is the best way to carry out your duties as VPT? Thank you so much for that question, Senator. It is so important right now that we start addressing issues of tradition seriously and not just talking about them, but actually doing tangible things. We're at a point where Texas a and feels different when you walk on campus now than it did 10 years ago. Of course, our student body has changed demographically, but the tone that Texas A&M should always have, the things that are special to us and the reason why we are proud to call ourselves Aggies, those things are starting to lose their intensity. So we need to make sure that we're doing a good job making sure that every single person at Texas A&M knows that they have a home and a family here in Aggie land. Until that's done, we're not done. So thank you for that question, Senator. Um, with that, Chair Hernandez, you've been recognized. Chair Hernandez, Community Relations. Um, as a former SGA Diversity Commission member, uh, one of my main concerns when it comes to traditions is incorporating diversity and inclusion into those traditions. Um, I, I believe that diversity and inclusion should be incorporated into every aspect of human life. Um, so my question is, um, what steps will you take to incorporate diversity and inclusion into traditions that every IP will follow? Senator, thank you for that question. So my tradition of the committee this year, I actually have three members. Uh, a diversity and inclusivity strategist and two other members that assist that person. And their job is to analyze each and every project that my office does, and then other outside organizations like Tradition and our Prison Council and Muster, and say, yes, we're doing the tradition part well. We've got that down, I think, at this point. You know, we've been a school for a while. But are we doing a good job of accessibility with you know equity and inclusivity? Are we addressing those? aspects because my job this year i've learned more than you know anything it's not just about hey here's what silver caps is it's reaching out to the groups on this campus that don't feel included as you said <laughs> it's making sure that they know they are and, and it's not always as easy as saying that sometimes you have to show a little more than hey we want you to come in sometimes there's a little more to do and so that is certainly something to address um, and I can agree more. But that's that's fifty percent of the dumb. So I mean, I'm half diversity commissioner at this point. That's that's really what it is. So <laughs> thank you for that question. Thank you. With that, we have one more question from Senator Gus Rodriguez. Senator Rodriguez, Engineering Caucus, permission to preface, Madam Speaker. Um, you do have that permission to preface very briefly, though. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, as you know, as you land, we're very, very close to our traditions. And as we've seen this past year, uh, we had to cancel these traditions uh, due to COVID. And I don't know about you, but for me, um, if the administration has the power to cancel these traditions purely due to COVID, as we transition into normalcy, they certainly have the power to do that again. So can you please say uh, what act specific actionable items you're willing to uh, take so that way the administration doesn't take away the more precious tradition. Absolutely. Thank you for that question, Senator. Um, so to be completely truthful and transparent, it is the administration's call because they have a university to run and their number one priority is the health and safety of the 75,000 students here. With that being said, we certainly have a lot of talking to do with them about how we do these things. Um, how do we do hybrid versions of things? But it would be irresponsible for me to say, hey, silver tax, all of last year, having it online, terrible idea. 
that's irresponsible of me because I'm putting the health and safety of all of my classmates at risk. So I, I believe there is a right way to do it. The way that we're doing it now and, and doing these hybrid forms, silver packs being hybrid forms so that people that are not able to come in person can still enjoy that tradition. So if there's one thing you take away from our traditions for me today, it is not about where we are when we do it. It's the meaning of that tradition. I, I've been a family host for, for people that just lost their son, that just lost their daughter. And I've done it virtually and I've done it in person, staring them in their eye. And I can tell you one thing, it's got the same effect both times. You are showing them that you care about what they just went through. And they cannot express their gratitude enough for that. And, and I never received a complaint of, hey, this isn't the same because it's online. Y'all gotta remember, it's not about us. It's not about us enjoying our time in Academic Plaza. It's about why we gather. That is the purpose. So again, Senator, thank you for that question. I appreciate it. Um, as time has ended, thank you for ending us on that note. Um, the period of Q&A has now ended. Um, so I do apologize for those that still have their hands raised. Um, thank you for that. We will now move into a period of debate. So if you can exit the room. Thank you. Um, so with that being said, we'll go into that period of debate. Do we have any debate against the, the nominee? Do we have any debate for the nominee? Seeing that we have no debate, um, the, the, that round of debate has concluded and we will conclude debate overall and we'll begin that period of voting led by pro tempore Marvin. The ballot is open. Link is sent in the chat. Let's pick up, fill out by 1130. Congratulations, Mr. Rivera. You will now be sworn in as the VP of Traditions in Enrichment. All right, raise your right hand and after me. I say I, your name. Mike Rivera. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability. Faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of state your office. The duties of the office of Vice President of Tradition and Enrichment. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. 
at all times to protect the welfare of the student body and to promote good relations and promote good relations between the students between the students and those concerned with the university and those concerned with the university congratulations <laughs> Congratulations, Mike. Um, with that being said, we have completed our confirmations, but as we still have time, the speaker will entertain a motion to bring in one last confirmation. And we do have a motion from Chair Hine. Hi, uh, permission to preface really quick? Yes, briefly. Awesome. So um, as y'all know, we have a bunch of, we still have three chair positions to get elected next meeting along with some other executive confirmations. And if we don't get through then that meeting, we will have to call a special session, which I promise we don't want that to happen. Um, so while we're already here, I highly encourage y'all not to vote against this. I know it's already late and we are students, um, but I move to deviate from the agenda to add a executive cabinet confirmation for the vice president of uh, legislative, legislative relations. Do I see any seconds for this motion? Seeing multiple seconds, I move to um, deviate from the agenda for this motion by general consent. Do I see any objections? So bad. Seeing, no objections, <laughs> seeing no objections, this motion does pass by general consent and we will deviate from the agenda to bring in one last confirmation for the vice president of legislative relations. So, and Natalie, if you would like to come to the floor and lead us in that process. Our final candidate of the night, which thank you guys so much, is nothing short of an absolute rock star. Her life passion is legislation, and her experience in this capacity is one that's going to definitely help me out more than I would be able to ask for as this upcoming year unfolds. She's ready to make the most of the year ahead, and I'm 1,000% confident in her abilities to run the most effective LR commission. Her ideas, are in, her ideas are tangible and incredible, and I'm excited for y'all to hear more. So with that, let's end our night with the one and only Sydney Ramon. Awesome. Um, howdy, Senate. It is so great to be here with you all tonight. Um, I had the opportunity to serve as a senator in the 72nd session. That being said, I know you all are very tired, so I'll just go ahead and and jump right in then. Um, am I sharing my screen or? Um, it's your decision. If you'd like us to share it, we do have your presentation in our drive. So okay. let us know what your preference is. If not, you can share your screen yourself. Yeah. Okay, I can go ahead. I'll go ahead and share it then. And you have five minutes starting at Howdy. Awesome. Oh, so sorry. That. There we go. Okay. Uh, once again, howdy Senate. My name is Sydney Ramon. I am class of 2023, A, 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 A. And I appreciate your consideration for the position of Vice President of Legislative Relations. More about me, my hometown is McAllen, Texas. For all my real Grand Valley people, I'm a political science major with a communication minor. And a fun fact about me is that me and my roommate Brogan co-parent a French bulldog named Sugar. That's my roommate and my dog. <laughs> That's my family up in that corner. Um, and then our legislative relations team when we traveled to Austin pre-COVID. So a little bit about my experience. I've been serving on the Legislative Relations Commission since I was a freshman. Originally, I came on the team as a fish aid, for those of you who are unfamiliar. Fish Aids is a freshman leadership organization that allows first year students to get involved with SGA. And in my capacity as a fish aid, I authored the online voter registration resolution, SR 7250, which was passed by Student Senate, thank y'all, and introduced open educational resources and transfer credits for veterans resolutions, which were also passed. Um, this year, in my capacity as a sophomore, I drafted three key pieces of legislation relating to open educational resources, specifically the expansion of the repository that currently exists, um, an increase in the student health services fee cap, and uh, formula funding specifically as it pertains to growing enrollment numbers. Another thing that I had the opportunity to do was collaborate with faculty and administration um, to gather information and feedback on our legislative priorities. And through that, I gained a lot of experience, but also established a lot of relationships that I think will be beneficial as we move towards next session. Another thing about me is that I currently serve as the intern for the Texas A&M Office of Government Relations. In this role, I assist with all of their communication advocacy efforts, 
Additionally, I monitor higher education legislation on behalf of the university um, and share how it may impact or inhibit our ability to educate our students. A little more about my experience most recently is my participation in Orange and Maroon Legislative Day. And I was directly able to advocate for our state's higher education system with legislators in the state capitol. And through this experience, I gained a greater understanding of the combined contributions of these universities, specifically relating to our United Against COVID initiatives and general legislative priorities. So my vision and values, the things that I value are integrity, education, visibility, and teamwork. Uh, my vision for myself as the vice president, but also for our commission, is to educate our student body on how the state legislature works and advocate for legislation that ensures our state legislator works for our students. More specifically, my goals are to host training sessions in partnership with our student senate counterpart, university advocacy program, and the office of government relations to provide our commission with essential skills and tools for our research and legislative writing. Um, the reason why I want to do this is because I feel like it will increase our efficiency during on session and really ensure the highest quality in um, what we produce, the eventual legislation that we produce. I'd also like to share monthly breakdowns on relevant legislation in the higher education space via the SGA social media platforms and facilitate one meeting a semester where we're able to review our advocacy points with any interested parties, whether this be students, faculty, administrators, uh, anyone who's interested in the work that we do. Visibility, like I said, is important to me and teamwork is also a large part of that. Another thing is prioritizing team building and respectful discourse within the commission. I believe this will help us to ensure that we're presenting information that is the most accurate, but also really strong, um, especially when discussions going on. Uh, lastly, but most importantly, advocate for our students in a way that aligns with our mission and values as a university, the vision of SBP parks and the voice of our student body. I hope you all consider um, allowing me to serve in this position because my education, my skill set, and most importantly, my passion for higher education will ensure that I am the fiercest advocate for you, your goals, your values, and your wants. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ngegum. Thank you so much, Ms. Ramon. Um, with that, we'll move into a period of Q&A. Does anyone have any questions for the appointee? Um, we have one question from Senator Williams. You are recognized. Senator Williams, Engineering Office. Very briefly, given that it is an off session, what are your plans and priorities? Yeah, that's a great question. So what I really value about the off session is that, or wait, I'm sorry, did you say on session or next year being an off session? Next year being an off session. Okay, yeah. What I really value about an off session is the opportunity to build a strong foundation for our advocacy efforts. And so what I'm going to be prioritizing is team building within the commission. I think that communication is really important. I think that fostering respectful discourse really allows us to fully serve our university when we're all aware of our limitations, our biases, um, holding each other accountable in that and, and sharing how we, view the, our, how we view the university from our perspective um, and incorporating that in the way that we serve our students. Um, additionally, like I said, I'd like to do a lot of training and education. I think that that's very important because it plays a role into how well we're able to gather our research and then turn it into legislation that we present to you all and advocate for. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more questions for the presenter? Seeing none, we will now move into a period of debate. So we will have to kick you out to the waiting room, Sydney. I do apologize. Um, but once she is out, we will move into our period of debate. Is there any debate against the candidate? Seeing that there is none, is there any debate for the candidate? One last time, if there is no debate against, um, the period of debate will now be concluded and we'll now move into a period of voting led by Speaker Pro Tempore Marbit. Yeah, that form is open. Just the link. Uh, let's get this done by 11.45. Refresh your pages, it's <laughs> closed. Thank you. 
Sydney, are you with us? Okay, yes, I'm here. Congratulations, you have just been confirmed as the new Vice President of Legislative Relations and will now be confirmed, will now be sworn in. Thank you. All right, Sydney, can you hear me? Yes. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Sydney Ramon. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully execute to the best of my ability to faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The duties of the office of, state your office. The duties of the office of the Vice President of Legislative Relations. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. For the Texas A&M University Student Government Association. To uphold the honor of the same. To uphold the honor of the same. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body. At all times to protect the welfare of the student body and to promote good relations and to promote good relations between the students between the students and those concerned with the university and those concerned with the university congratulations congratulations sydney with that we have finished all of our elections and all of our confirmations so thank you senate we do have a motion from chair hein you are right Chair Hyde, no regulations. I promise I'll go like this one. I move to the agenda to move all reports into an email format and to move it to Seeing multiple seconds um, and no objections, um, we do move by general consent to her motion and to move all those committee reports by email and proceed to closing roll call. Seeing no objections, this passes by general consent. So with that, we will have pro tem for Marbet lead us in the closing roll call. The closing roll call is open. Once you fill that out, please leave the meeting. Um, we have the signs, we have the doors in the back. You cannot come back in once you leave, but we will see that. Oh. So we will open it and I will open it. Um, refresh your pages. I am. Let me go in and double check that for you all. All right, I just opened it. Can y'all try that again? <laughs> all righty, Senate. Um, as that you fill that form out. Oh. All righty, Senate, as you all um, fill out that form, I will, it will remain open and we will close out the meeting and I call this meeting to prepare. The gavel, meeting is over. Bye. Where do you want to stack the lacquer jacks? You can just bring them right here and put it in this box. Yep. Yeah.
All right, for the rest of you all on here, I will be ending the Zoom call. Thank you all for a lovely meeting, and I wish you all a lovely night.